Welcome, friends, to Tanked Up, the podcast all about video games and beer. I'm one of your hosts, Ben. It's episode 280. Uh, I am here with Lucy. I'm a very sweaty Lucy, but I'm here. <laughs> I mean, we're all going to be very soon. As you can see it glistening beautifully off <laughs> of us. Uh, and the other two people, um, that if you're a video viewer, you will already see their beautiful faces. We are joined this week by Peter and Andre from... Auroc Digital, a Bristol-based mm-hmm. video game development company. <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> there you both. There was a question mark at the end of that intro that was just quite good. Um, <laughs> yes, hello. That question, does. question everything. Um, how are you both? Are you well? I'm doing great. Amazing. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good as well. It's the as we talked about off air. It's the last day of summer. Hmm. Mm. And uh, so obviously we're going to get all glistening and sweaty. Absolutely. Chat about beers yeah. and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, we're have to a beer so we we'll cancel it out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, let's talk about beers first then. As we do each and every week, we get together to have a few beers and talk about video games. So we'll launch straight into the beers. Uh, Andres, you are drinking a beer. You've been drinking a beer for a little while now. What are you drinking? I have been. Um, I'm kind of glad I went first because otherwise I would have finished it before it probably got back to me. Because it's really good. Um, I'm having the whip whip beer from Queer mm, Brewing. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's really good. Um, it's kind of like sort of orangey, kind of like I don't know how to describe it other than just orangey. I mean, it, the orange is kind of like the biggest flavor you taste when you take a sip of it. Um, there's a little bit of like hoppiness to it, but Really, it's, I'm just loving the orange. It's super refreshing, especially with how hot it is, mm. as it was saying yeah. earlier. So it's just, it's just delicious. I'm like sipping it, and I'm like, I gotta slow down on it. <laughs> Whippers are like that, right? Like just kind of yeah. creep up on you, so refreshing, and then they, you're like, oh dear, I'm a couple in now. Absolutely. Um, is it is it a new beer for you? One you've had before? Uh, no, I have not had them before. I ordered like a mystery three pack from Queer Brewing mm. for this. Um, oh, okay, nice. And I've never had any of their beers, so yeah, I'm enjoying it. Good, nice. Uh, Peter, you've already pulled a beer as well. What are you uh, cracking into? I have. So um, I am drinking uh, Newton Newtown Park Brewing Company. So this is a Bristol-based company. Uh, this is their table beer. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. And it is called All Day Long. Uh, it is pretty good. So I've been kind of getting into table beers recently, low alcohol beers, to yeah. kind of go and see what magic brewers can do. I kind of feel like the table beers are <laughs> really good. The table beer and the lager are two great styles that really test a brewer's ability to actually brew, right? Yeah, like there's nowhere yeah. to hide in the lager. And with a table beer, you've got to really work hard to get lots of flavor and lots of... Uh, you know, lots of good stuff out of it, and um, they seem to have done all right. Good. So they seem to have done okay. Nice um, New- yeah. Newtown Park. Newtown Park. Everything I've had from them has been very good so yeah. far. So it's nice to hear that. I mean, everything I've had has been slightly bigger as well. Like you know, six and a half percent IPAs, all the eight odd percent double IPAs and things. So it's it's nice to hear that the the lower end is good as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. nice to uh, it's nice to drink Bristol stuff basically because. Mm. It's fresh, which is really nice. Absolutely, yeah. Good. Uh, Lucy, we'll come to you. What what, yeah. what beer are you going to crack into? Um, I'm going to crack into a... Change my mind. going to go for that one instead. <laughs> I'm going to go for a Whiplash, who make very big, bold beers. They don't, you know, I don't think they would go for a table beer maybe you know Mm. maybe i'm wrong but they do go for some you know really big punchy bold fruity beers um and this is called water jump it's an india pale ale from whiplash um yeah 6.8 percent so that is what i'm gonna go for first perfect yeah i i agree with table beers nowhere to hide I i think we saw a lot of table beers probably probably about two years ago mm-hmm. where everyone started to be like okay this is very much the the trend where it's like okay we're gonna go for low alcohol beers we're gonna give you the flavor but not you know not so much the the abv and it's like so many breweries like 
like I think of Colonel Colonel Brewery who really yeah. nailed that and Brew by Numbers who mm-hmm. really went in that direction and really nailed it so yeah absolutely interesting and I, it, yeah. you've got table beers which I think are probably exactly the same as micro IPAs or yeah. small beers or whatever people want to kind of call them but yeah uh, Wiper and True Bristol based uh, do a good mm-hmm. small beer as well um, and I think it was a couple of years ago Magic Rock maybe that sort of seemed to start the trend they brought out like a 2% micro IPA or something like that mm-hmm. and then every, it seemed to build from there a little bit so nice you get that one open and I'm going to open up a, I'm going to go for a Bristol Brewery as well this week um, I've got Big Bounce from Good Chemistry. Uh, it's a 6% IPA. Few tasting notes on it. Uh, Good Chemistry great because they give you tons of information on there about it. Um, but it says this hazy IPA is hopped throughout fermentation with Sultana, Eldorado and Comet for all that biotransformative goodness. That was almost a word I couldn't say. Amazing. Uh, have you been to their room? Have you been to their brewery? Yes, we had um, a few years ago. I think it was maybe the second year, third year we were in. Uh, uh, Sam, who used to work for Good Chemistry, invited us down. So we actually did an episode uh, at, um, at, their, at their brewery. And we've been back a few times since. Um, you know, just going down on stuff like the East Bristol Brewery Trail, which hasn't happened for the last kind of 18 months, two years, which is a shame. But yeah, yeah, I love going down to Good Chemistry. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. We did a, um, I know somebody who works at... Um local board game store uh, uh cafe called chance and Counter. yes yes and they put on a uh they put on a mega game which was um a 100 person social deduction game where it was a um it was kind of 1920s 1930s gangsters and moles and the idea was that it was like a it was a prohibition game in a brewery yep and you had to figure out who the you had to figure out who the murderer was and who did x y and z and it was amazing like everybody was sort of like dressed up in their fancy 1920s 1930s stuff and then like you know these tanks in the background of just like yeah do you want some of this stuff it was oh it's fantastic really good fun. <laughs> was it almost like a murder mystery type yeah it was exactly that yeah yeah okay. it was a murder mystery okay. and you also had to make sure that you didn't get murdered which was pretty cool um and um so everybody put on these sort of like phony baloney accents of like you know these kind of like new york dolls kind of stuff um and uh yeah it was it was really really cool uh, it was really um really well put together and it's an amazing space if you ever get a chance to go see mm. it really wonderful yeah nice um but, uh, but people who want to go back to the early days of tanked up will also find an episode that we had the guys from chance encounters on with sam as well just sat in my lounge where we got absolutely smashed and um it's a two-parter because we sat there for about four or five hours just drinking and drinking drinking because they wanted to come on and and talk about that evening that they were going to have and i think that was probably the first 10 minutes of the conversation and then the rest of it (laughs) just was mayhem where we just drank and drank and drank so yes good good i'm guided with your auroc digital uh, bond team bonding event yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's just what everyone needs isn't it that's exactly yeah. what it should be um good so uh lucy i will come back to you you're you're sniffing the beer mm-hmm. what's it like very citrusy in the smell okay uh yeah it poured probably yeah light shoreish color very very opaque it's like it, it it's thick it looks thick it looks juicy mhm nothing you expect less from whiplash yeah and yeah got that nice fruity aroma that nice citrusy fruity aroma um yeah it's looks like a good beer quintessential whiplash i'm just mm. going to pour a little bit more into the glass taste it whiplash whiplash are normally really really good fantastic Yeah, follows through through to the taste. Oh, oh yeah. I, I mean, I'm I, I, I'm trying. I'm I'm saying oh yeah whilst I'm sniffing the glass. <laughs> it's like I'm not getting much on the aroma, but it's so because I was like going in for it, it's like is there anything on the aroma? Not much, but in the taste, just creamy, kind of juicy, tropical. Oh, that's it. It, 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 it the, 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 the aroma kind of belies the taste, and mm. it's like sometimes it's just like, mm, 
you know, sometimes you don't get one or the other, and sometimes it's like, sometimes it's a red flag, it's like, if I don't smell anything, is it going to be just, you know, not the greatest taste in beer, but completely the opposite with this. It's like, not a lot on the aroma, but so much in the taste. It's... As I say, it's fruity, it's punchy, it's 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 got a bit of bitterness, not too much, as you expect from you know Whiplash. They are very much fruit forward, you know, kind of brewery, kind of you know, we're, we're not too much in the. I'd say they've taken the Juice Bomb kind of mantle from someone like uh, Daya. Mm -hmm. It's like yes, we are going to be fruit forward or or verdant or something like that. But yeah, this instinctively, I'm keep going for that aroma and keep putting my nose in the beer, but I'm not getting anything. But in terms of the taste, this is good. This mm. is really good. Amazing. Yeah, it, it's. I wouldn't say amazing. Okay. I know you said amazing, okay. but I wouldn't say amazing. Just because I know what Whiplash can do, I know the standard that they can bring. Um, I wouldn't say this is probably in the, you know, the higher echelons of what they can do. It's very good, but um, what I really want to know what percentage is. six point eight. I would have said that's a bit lower. You know, just it tastes like maybe around the five percent. Mm -hmm. Um. It's not as it's not as thick. It's not as you know full bodied as I was expected. Six point eight percent. So maybe you know if I had looked at the can and just like expecting a bigger full of beer, I may have been a bit disappointed there. But in terms of the flavour, it's still bringing out. It, it, it's really good. As I say, like the flavour is very much citrusy, hoppy, quite bold in its like tropical flavours. Um, slightly creamy but yeah i think i've had better whiplashes but and i think for the overall taste as well and an experience i think when i put my nose into this i'm not really getting an aroma so it's just mm. like a, mm, a bit of a bit of a slight on that front but it's still good Good. I think that's what that's where my surprise comes from. It's where it's like I can't smell anything, right. but the taste is really good. Right. But I think Whiplash have done better beers where it's like I get the smell, I get the aroma, and I get the taste after that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's Whiplash. It's still good. So. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink it and shut. Perfect. Know, perfect. So. All right. Cool. Um. So the the good chemistry. Big bounce. Um, it's all darker than the than the beer that you've got loose. Um, I, I I think it's about the it's roughly the same as yours, Peter. I think Get a little bit of sort of an orange hint to it. Yeah, yours, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little, little yeah. hazier. Um, big big old foamy head on it, which is nice um, sticking around as well. But the nose has got this like deep fruitiness to it, which isn't like tropical. It doesn't quite come across as a stone fruit, and it's not until you taste it that you realise it's almost a little bit plummy um whether there's a um i think one of the hops in there actually was um i was uh, a hazy ipa is hopped throughout fermentation with sultana el dorado and comet so it's got this nice sort of plummy note to it this sort of um not quite earthy fruit flavor to it but it's sort of edging towards that way. And whilst Good Chemistry say that it isn't too bitter on their little percentage chart as well, it does have a bitter finish to it. So it's quite an easy sort of start. It's very hoppy. You've got this nice sort of plum, not quite sort of raisin. You know, it's not quite that sweet. It's a little bit more earthy than that. But then it builds into this just nice, easy, bitter finish on it. Um, yes. I, I mean, with all of this talk of lower alcohol beers, I could put this at being lower than it is. You know, not up six percent. This this could easily be kind of a four percent. Doesn't have the mouthfeel of that. It, it's definitely got a um, sort of a nice full body to it, and it's got a slight sort of not oiliness, but a slight slickness 
to it as well. Um, so it doesn't kind of like coat the tongue, is it? it? It sort of like just, you know, flies straight through, which is really easy to drink. It doesn't have much carbonation to it. And it's just very, very easy. Mm -hmm. I don't think, though, that I could drink like two of these in a row. It's quite... Um, that that sort of heavier fruit flavour with that bitterness almost gives it a bit of a, um, like an ashy sort of feel to it. So on the end, it's maybe not quite a smoky finish, but it does feel a little bit harsher than that with the bitterness. So it's a little bit ashy in its finish, which again, is fine. And I, and I enjoy beers that do that, but it's not a beer I'm going to grab straight away again. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, very easy to drink. Uh, definitely a very bold and very specific set of flavours, which I think not everyone would get on with. Absolutely fine for me, and I am going to nail this beer because it's very nice, <laughs> and then I'm going to be done with it. Um, so can I just expand on the ashy? Mm -hmm. That 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 particularly does that mean? What do you mean by ashy? Because sometimes I drink beers so it's just like, yes, this tastes like the end of a cigarette, but <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a little bit like that. I think it's right. it's, it's it's not quite this. You know, when we get with a lot of like porters and and stouts, you have a more sort of smoky okay, end to smoky. it, yeah. and it, yeah. it, it's almost like that. But because it's got that hint of bitterness as well, it just makes it a little bit harsher. It's not that sort of light, airy smokiness that you get from something that's maybe like barrel aged or has mm -hmm. been has got a load of wood chip in it or something like that. It's just got this light kind of okay. harshness yeah, yeah. to it yeah, almost yeah, yeah. without it being harsh. So mm -hmm. mm. perfect, perfect. Let's drink these beers and we will jump into games. Um, and um, we'll open the floor up to um, to the two of you um, to talk about All Rock Digital, uh, and what you guys do, what you've been up to, and then uh, the game which uh, ultimately has brought you to our uh, screens, yeah. um, which I think for our listeners will be very, everything will be interesting. But this this yeah, may yeah, just yeah. just cross over <laughs> in the um in the niche that we There's currently a exist in. Diagram yes. that we do, and you lot just <laughs> so nicely into yeah. it. That's right. We were we were we were listening to the podcast. And we were like, let's make a game for them. <laughs> um, so um, uh, I tell you what. Let me. I I, I can probably um, talk a little bit about the company in general, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, so um. So yeah, so, so uh, Auroc was started about going on 11 years ago now. Okay. Um, so I've been there about six years. Andres, you've been there, what, couple, a year, two years? No, a year now. Almost. Year, a year now? Yeah. Um, and um, so uh, it was founded by uh, uh, the person who still runs the company, a guy called Tom, uh, Tom Rawlings. Um, and uh, it's a Bristol-based studio. Um, so it started off as kind of a little bit of a consultancy, and then it grew to start to make um, games uh, of, of its own. And then um, we started to really snowball uh, uh, different game ideas and working with different IPs. So we started working with people like Games Workshop, who make the Warhammer figures. Mm -hmm. um, so we worked on a game called Chainsaw Warrior. That did very well. Um, we did another one of those. Uh, we did another one after a few years later called Dark Future, which was based on one of their very old uh, uh, 1980s uh, vehicular combat uh, tabletop games. Uh, we also worked with Modifius, who, if you like role playing games, um, they do a game called Acton Cthulhu. We did a tabletop version of that. It's kind of like XCOM meets shooting Nazis and also maybe the spawns of chaos. Okay. Um, uh, so that happened. Uh, so we made that. Uh, uh, our most recent products uh, have been uh, we've been doing ports recently and we've also been doing original IP so uh, our uh, people might know us for a game called Mars Horizon which is a space agency management game um, uh, in which you control you know uh, the European Space Agency for example you say hey uh, we're gonna start we're gonna really focus on satellites and you start launching satellites and it's a management game in, in that way so you're not an astronaut you're actually running the whole agency. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we also put out uh, uh, ports, as I say, so we've done uh, Mega Aquarium, and we've done uh, The Colonists. Uh, yeah, good thumbs up, excellent, good, we did a yes, good job then. Yes, yes. Um, so, <laughs> we'll talk about um, that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, uh, so uh, uh, Mega Aquarium is basically Zoo Tycoon, but all exclusively with fish. Uh, and uh, The Colonists is basically a game in which cute little robots go to a planet and then they have to survive for themselves. It's a little bit like Settlers. Um, and we're working on a bunch of other things. And one of the things that we're working on at the moment is uh, a game called Brewmaster, which is a homebrewing first person hobby simulation game. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm going to throw it over to you, Andres, to, uh, to talk about it uh, since obviously you're on the team. Yeah, so um, I am a programmer working on Brewmaster, um, and as Peter, Peter alluded earlier, I've been uh, with the team for about a year now, so pretty much there since the start of, of like, like true production. Mm -hmm. um, and the main point of the game is it's supposed to be kind of this very cozy, like, simulation, and uh, it's supposed to be very true to kind of how beer brewing actually is. You know, because we want to draw people into the hobby, A, and then also we want people who are already in the hobby to be able to play this and be like, yes, like this is how, you know, the the process would happen in real life and yeah. like be able to play around in it and kind of use it as a sandbox um, if they would like. Um, and then obviously, you know, we would, we would also have like a campaign mm -hmm. uh, for people to follow if, if that's more of their thing rather than just, you know, sandbox brewing beers. Um, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, yeah, so um, so basically the idea is that at the very heart of the game is this uh, chemical simulation. So um, the idea is uh, essentially there's a replication of real world chemistry. Mm. Um, so um, so when you so in some video games, for example, and again, this is not to knock those games because, you know, games like Minecraft are fairly popular. Uh, but in Minecraft, for example, oh, you take, uh, yeah, you know, you've heard of it, right? Mm. Um, there's a, you oh, take um, you take a you know a block of wood, and then two sticks, and then that turns into I don't know a chair or a roller coaster or whatever <laughs> it is that happens in Minecraft, right? So uh, um, a rope ladder. Oh, there you go, yeah. rope ladder. Here you go. Okay, so big fan here. <laughs> Fine. Um, so you get you get a rope ladder out of that, right? Um, so what you're essentially doing is taking two blocks and putting them together, you know, two two kinds of objects, and you put them together. What happens with our chemical simulation is. Um, it's not like you're taking like, okay, I'm going to take a block of malt and a block of hop and a block of yeast and a block of water and then a beer is made. Um, mm -hmm. Instead, what it actually is, is like, okay, I'm going to take this very specific hop and it's going to have these flavor profiles as it brews. Um, and depending on obviously when I add it to the boil, uh, so if I, if I add it early, it's going to be bittering most likely. Uh, and if I add it late, you're probably going to want to concentrate on things like aromas, you know, all that sort of like New England, uh, you know, fruity tropicalness that you get, you know, from that sort of late stage hopping. Um, uh, you know, the temperature of the water matters. So, mm -hmm. um, so for example, we have a system that uh, you get to 100 degrees and you need to put the lid on because obviously it's going to start evaporating. So we have the, the system actually knows, OK, we're going to start losing water and moisture now. Um, and then during that process, obviously, you'll take the um, the sugars out of the malts. So you'll end up with a wort and that will have certain properties depending on which kinds of malts that you use. Um, it depends whether or not you're going to use malt extract brewing or if you're going to go with whole grain brewing. Um, if you're going to go with uh, maybe you'll add some adjuncts to kind of lighten things up, you know, what I mean, like kind of uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll bung some rice in there because I kind of want a slightly lighter color to the to the beer, it's, to the finished product. Um, so I guess, uh, so all of this stuff kind of happens. So you can end up with basically, you could take the exact same ingredients, you know, yeah. uh, take something like, um, I don't know, like Fuggles, for example, like a classic British hop, right? Uh, you could take that, the same malt, the same whatever, um, and combine them in different ways, combine them using different methods, and you'll end up with a different beer, mm. a different kind of beer, um, and it will have different tastes. So then obviously there's this chemical simulation that understands that. More than that, um, the game also knows what kind of beer you've made, okay. so it can basically say, "Okay, I think you've probably it's it's you know, uh, it's got that kind of um, slightly earthy. Uh, it's kind of this kind of uh, SRM value. This is the level of IBUs. 
Uh, it's got you're using these specific uh, uh, region of hops and this specific kind of malt. I think you've made a porter, and oh, okay. uh, and it will yeah. and we'll basically be like uh, and basically it will say like it's like you know X percent a porter. Maybe you've made a stout, but kind of messed it up. Maybe you've made like you know this. Um, so obviously, you know, everyone's this... first go instantly. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 basically, what it is is a very very um, almost analog tool set. Uh, so rather than like mm. one plus one equals two, it's like one mm. plus one equals. Mm. Oh God, I need to control this chaos <laughs> in some way. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so the whole point of it is, as, as you know, we we're saying here, yeah, we want to lower the barrier to entry to that because homebrewing can be a very very daunting prospect to kind of get into. Yeah. And actually, it's a really fun hobby. Beer, beer is a really really fun hobby. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, so we want to kind of bring the world back, basically. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Like it, it would be like. For us, it would be a success in our mind if you could take a recipe online, follow it exactly to the letter, and then our game is like, oh, you made this type of beer. Yep. And, it, and you know, that have it match up with what it should have made in real life. Yep. That is like... The goal. Yeah, that is 100% like the what, you know, what, what, what we're going for here. We want it to be, you know, grounded and, and as close to real life as it could possibly be yeah, yeah. completely on the on the sort of the the programming side of things this must be an incredibly difficult kind of thing to actually work <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> i was gonna try and throw some words in there no just work yeah yeah, yeah i mean like just i without even going too it deep in depth uh, i mean just things like yeast right when you think about it it's mm. a living organism that can you know split and die and sometimes colonies die at different rates than other colonies right it's not just one it's not just a hundred you know yeasts and that's it it's you know hundreds of thousands of cells and forming different colonies and reacting in different ways and merging and splitting and just like that is when you think about it it's, it's so it's very complicated and it's very it's 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 fun i love it yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely um and that's that's the thing. Like it is. Um, so one of the things that we sh I should probably make clear is it, it's definitely not. Um, you know. Um, so there's great tools out there, like things like Beersmith. Mm -hmm. So uh, Beersmith is a really great tool. If if you want to do actual home brewing at home, go and get Brook Beersmith. Like that that's great. It'll tell you exactly how to make absolutely everything. Right. That's amazing. Um, it's also quite daunting. Um, so all of that stuff that you're talking about there, obviously, is is it's in there. It's in. It's actually in, but working behind the scenes and all this you know mad calculation is going on. But again, a huge part of what we're trying to do is make that really approachable. Mm. So rather than rather than like so, when we make games, we have these things called pillars and anti pillars. Mm. And what they say is this is what the game is, and this is explicitly what the game is not. And one of our anti pillars is GCSE chemistry exam. Right. right. Like what we don't want to do is have like. Um, we really don't want to be like, and here's the bonkers mathematical formula that does this, because that's not really the brewing experience. Like that's that's like, that's like lab brewing, right? Like that's that's yeah. that's people in you know um, A, B, and Bev trying to come up with like ways of saving money of changing this, this, and this, right? Like, and that's fine. Like, like, but that's also just not what we're after because this is about home brewing specifically. Um, so, and it, it runs to stuff like that, but it also runs to things like we have an X-ray mode. Uh, which is kind of like I, I sometimes describe it as like it's like Superman vision, but for beer. So you can look into a liquid. So oh. you can basically like look at it, and it will say, "Cool, right now, I am this number of um, you know, I am this SRM, I am this temperature, I have this, gr I am this gravity," um, and it will update in real time, and it will keep you going, right? So you can see all of that good stuff, and. Let's say, for example, I um, I've moused over, or you know, use my controller on my console or whatever to look at a beer um, or an ingredient. Let's say, I can a little button will come up and it will say, uh, "Oh, you're looking at you're looking at um, a finished beer, and the finished beer is a um, okay." Let's go with like um, something like a vit beer, for example. Obviously, you're drinking one of those <laughs> at the moment, so let's go with that a vit beer. Um, um, It'll be you are looking at a bit there. brilliant, but it will also have a little button, and it will take you directly to something called the Brewpedia, 
-hmm. and the Brewpedia will say, this is what this style is. Mm. This is how you make this. This is how you, this is oh, what okay. flavor profile it is. Yeah. This is uh, this is some information about um, uh, Mr. Kellis, who basically saved the style back in the 1950s and 1960s. Like, and the whole point of it is, what we want is, you know, I'm, I'm a busy person. I'm sure we all, we're all really, really busy. Um, what we don't want is people to get get it on the first day and play like three or four hours and be like, oh, this is great. <laughs> Leave it for a week, come back and then be like, how to brew beer. Like, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. So we want to try and keep that like knowledge going and always constantly kind of going, okay, think about doing this or these are the kinds of materials that you might need to use to make this kind of style of beer. Um, so again, so anything we can do to do that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Do you, two, yeah. Do you two actually homebrew at all? Uh before we get into that, because I absolutely oh. do not, and I think this would be the best gateway into doing that, because I'm always reticent to do that, because like money, time, space, right. and everything like that. But I think where you guys are saying, like, y you want to get that simplicity um, mm. across, is because while I was, you know, thumbs up in at Mega Aquarium, is that I remember that it was at EGX where we saw Mega Aquarium, and my sister, she does not play games, you know, hardly any at all. It's like, uh, we used to play games as kids, and it's like, I, I went very much into, I play games, she did not. And Mega Aquarium, I had to literally leave her then, <laughs> and it was like, she loved that game. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, can you get me a code? It's like, I'll, I'll, I will buy you the game. If you want <laughs> she loved it, and, it, uh, and I think it definitely had that kind of like approachable this is very much you don't need to understand even management games sim games it's like you understand fish fish have to be alive and it's like it's the same thing it's like yeast have to be alive beer has to be alive beer has to go through these same sort of steps fish have to go through these same sort of steps and i think if that if Brewmaster is anything the same way as, like, you know, Brewmaster, uh, I mean, Mega Aquarium, it's like, I have complete faith that you, like, know how to onboard people. Even onboard people who are just, like, yeah. don't know anything about beer. It's like, I have a very... I, I'm sure Ben, <laughs> me and you, it's just like, we, we have a very tangential understanding of beer we love to drink it but it's like sure. if you try to make it sure. things would explode <laughs> things would explode, you know <laughs> but it's just like it, we understand it but but that's you know for someone who's like doesn't know anything about management games sim mm. games it's like you not in a um like kind of disparaging kind of way or, or condescending kind of way it's like you put those steps out for people. It's like yeah. you understand it. So yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, 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 that's very kind of you to say. I think I think there's a um, I think generally there's a there's a kind of philosophy at the studio, which is essentially that um, that's kind of nice, but also kind of mercantile. A mercantile? <laughs> I, I keep messing that up. Mercantile. <laughs> um, and the the nice part of it is like we we genuinely believe that you know obviously like we should welcome as many different people um, as we possibly can into our into our products because it's just a nice thing to do right like we, we want we want to be able to be slightly representative and we want to be able to like lower the barrier to entry for gaming in general because you know that's that's great it's a lovely thing to do you know hugs all around um but there's also a kind of capital evil capitalist part of us which is like <laughs> if the more you push people away with super hardcore stuff and don't get me wrong like uh you know I'm very much into hardcore games when I, you know, every every now and uh, every now and again. I mean, you, you're playing Monster yeah. Hunter at the moment, right? Is that is that right? You're, are you still playing Monster Hunter, or you, you moved like on to? Oh, that was a month ago. You, you're done with Monster Hunter. You completed <laughs> that one, haven't you? Um, but you, 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 but you know, th those are very specific, very um, hardcore games, and they take quite a lot of um, sort of. Uh, baked in knowledge to be able to understand things. You need to understand how to use a 3D camera for one, right? Like there's something that just isn't mm. easy if you hand yeah. it to somebody. Yeah. Um, if we are able to kind of bring lots of people here who maybe don't often think about games or maybe play only a few and they get it because they like the theme and then they realize, oh, there's lots of depth here and we kind of, you know, walk them through this. Well, the kind of, you know, 
the mercantile part of that is you get to sell a lot of copies of a game. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, it's great to have things out there like, you know, Demon Souls and, you know, uh, your super hardcore Call of Duty Online, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, like, beer isn't really about that. Beer isn't really yeah. about, like, it's about being quite, you know, it's a thing that we've had for thousands of years. It's a thing that kind of, like, transcends culture and, and, and country and all that sort of stuff. And, and really, we were like, well, so we should definitely make this kind of quite accessible and stuff. So, yeah, so, yeah, but that's definitely high on our list of stuff to do. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had my cousin just asked me, he was like, what's mead? And I was like, I don't even know, but it tastes like honey. You might like it. <laughs> right. And he's like, oh, okay, I'll try it then. But if I said, oh, it was, this is how you ferment it, the top yeah, fermentation yeah. and the bottom ferment, he, he probably wouldn't be like, what right. are you talking about? Right. Go away. Why did I even text you? So yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that that kind of... Not that my sister was too into fish, but it's just like, she got in there with the mechanics, so it's just like... Yeah. I, it, so it's kind of... um. I think... Do you think people will get into the game with it's like... Okay, people are looking on Steam for... Um, I want... Sim games, I want management games. Right, right, right. Do you think you'll also get people from the audience of me where it's like, okay, I'd love to know how to brew beer in a, in a responsible and way that I, I don't blow up my kitchen or bathtub or something <laughs> I, like that. It's just... I mean, that, that's, the, that's the goal, right? Is to just <laughs> like be able to appeal to people who, you know, don't generally like have a hardcore maybe understanding of how beer is made but yeah. maybe has a tangential you know i like drinking beer i like going out i like whatever and it's just like hey this game i like management games and it's it's a mm-hmm. it's a hobby that i have a tangential interest in let me give this a shot and okay. then you know, yeah. maybe through that like they gain more knowledge you know and maybe that's just a side effect of playing the game and having fun but you know if, if that's the side effect then you know we right. did our jobs yeah. right um, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I think there's also, um, and one of the things I always kind of talk about is, um, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I, I didn't really know all that much about sort of Renaissance Italy until I played Assassin's Creed 2. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> right? I've done an architecture degree, and I learned more about Renaissance <laughs> Italy through Assassin's Creed than I did through my architecture degree. So. Right. And so, and so I do think there's, I do think there's, um, you know, there is a there is a there's a great deal of um, sort of learning that people can do through video games, um, through osmosis. I think the reason that like, because it's certainly not an edutainment title, but mm-hmm. like, um, edutainment kind of gets it wrong because they're just like the purpose here is learning, and they kind yeah, of yeah. miss the point of the whole fun game bit. Um, whereas you know, you look at things like um, uh, like. Uh, the only reason I know what an, the difference is between a Evolution Five and an Evolution Six car is because I played Gran Turismo Two when I was younger. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you take these things on by osmosis. Yeah. And I think that um, for me, I think that the act, like the actual act of like science is really really interesting. Like mm. just just being scientific and and I mean that literally like um, finding out why something works in the way that it works. Right. Like. I'm trying to figure out well why does light bend when you put it through a prism I'm trying to look at it and do it all that kind of fun hands-on stuff that you used to do right before it got battered out of you by you know year 10 uh, GCSE physics right like um all of that sort of stuff that stuff is really interesting and like I think human beings are really really curious about stuff we mm-hmm. are always like trying to figure out how things work and to me that's a huge part of the appeal of home brewing and one of the reasons yeah. that I think this is a really interesting way of learning about it because as you say the barrier to entry is often things like well i don't know where to start it's going to be quite expensive if i ruin it i'm going to ruin a room uh you know like you know if i if i shatter you know a, a glass carboy or whatever it is i mean i might go to down to a and e um you know there's all of this kind of stuff and and it's just really interesting to see how different properties kind of interact with one another and if 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 that means that you know, as you say, like, um, you know, if beer fans are just like, I wonder how this is made. 
that's enough for us. Like, and yeah. we can just we can just show you how that works. And uh, you know, yeah, we really want to represent kind of beer culture as well. In that, like, we want to represent, you know, craft beer, beer through history. We're going to have characters that are going to kind of talk about, you know, um, the different elements of beer, like, um, you know, uh, pairing things with food. Like, how does that work? Mm. Why is that important? Like, the history of the history of beer. Like, why, you know, I find it. I love the fact that we invented beer before we invented the wheel. Like we got our priorities right, right. <laughs> so, like you know, there's there's huge parts of you know uh, of um, learning and education that thinks that um, you know we set we became a civilization because of beer. Um, yeah, all bro, of this stuff yeah. is really cool. Like it's it's like wow, this is an amazing wonder product. But like, uh, but you know, obviously there was about thirty or forty or maybe fifty years where it just kind of became like fizzy malt water that nobody really cared about and it's kind of lost its status now but actually yeah. it's a really important thing um so yeah yeah it, we definitely kind of want to get across all of that stuff nice good i i, I have so many questions yeah <laughs> I, I will let you have the floor then because i'm just like oh you lot are really passionate about beer that's <laughs> i just i don't want to talk about video games <laughs> i just want to talk about beer for the rest well, it, it, of the podcast it, 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 so then i'll absolutely let you. <laughs> we absolutely can do that i i think um sort of first first question is kind of what makes this like what makes this a game right is is everything kind of done in real time am i making a lager and i'm sat waiting you know, I've got to come back to the game in a few days because that's how long it's sat in there for, just to check on it and then come back a few days later. And it, 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 sure. so, kind of like what what makes it, uh, yeah, what makes it a sort of a, a game and something that I'm going to say, kind of do my first brew and go, oh, I understand the process of this. I've played an hour or, or a little bit of it, and then I'll come back to it tomorrow and check it out again, or I'll come back to it in a, in a couple of days' time and check it out again. I mean, th this isn't an idle game, right? This is sure. not a game where where you, you do it. something and then it's like, oh, you, you've all your, you've used all of your energy for the day. Come back tomorrow, right? This is, <laughs> this is a collect a, the beer you know. bottles, and you can do <laughs> this next task. No, this is this is you know more on the the sim side, right? Yep. So yeah. obviously, if you need to wait a large swath of time, it, we will have a time fast forward mechanic so mm -hmm. that you could fast forward time or even just straight up skip you know time nice. just through a loading screen if you wanted to um and to answer your question about you know how how we'll walk players through it uh one of the modes we'll have is a sandbox mode where people could just mess around do whatever they want nice. but we're also nice. going to have a campaign when you, you slowly unlock ingredients and you slowly mm. unlock nicer you know uh nicer ways to brew beers and uh you'll unlock connections to you know other thing like other breweries other business connections and other things like that and you slowly um improve your your craft for lack of a better term um and it's you know it, it's it's kind of like building being a home brewer if if you had you know all of the resources in the world kind of situation yeah. Mm, mm. so yeah yeah exactly good good um and then um from that going back into sort of the more the beer side i suppose what um uh, I, not to get too deep into sort of a business deals and things but have you guys like gone out to to breweries and chatted with them have you have you had like consult consultations with with various people you know talking about sort of like beer and food there's lots of people kind of out there at the moment doing these kinds mm. of things has it been an absolute mega ton of research is this something you guys were already sort of interested in and had that knowledge about and then have have you just sort of refined that through a few different sort of connections and things yeah sure yeah i can, I can definitely tackle that um so um uh yeah so um i'll be completely honest with you uh i didn't really know or think i liked beer before we started making this thing oh um, yeah it was really interesting um so uh, i was in the room when we started to uh, sort of talk about this stuff so we the way that we work uh, as a studio is we kind of we throw around ideas of like what could we possibly do so we asked the whole team uh, we're about there's about 50 of us now um we'll ask different team members um you know what what should we make have you got some good game ideas and then we were kind of um we, we were kind of coming off the bat of a product that had done like okay but it hadn't done amazingly and we were kind of mm. thinking to ourselves why why was that this was a fair number of years ago now um and we sort of started throwing around well what we want to really do is make something that's kind of um 
accessible to everyone and kind of open to a thing that has a big audience. So we started searching around. We were like, well, what do we like? And then, you know, somebody kind of like, you know, threw out the phrase, well, we like, you know, we like going out for a drink. We like, you know, going out for food. And we like it's Bristol with, uh, you know, if if if, uh, if your listeners don't know, Bristol is pretty good for food and drink. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I always tease these guys as a brewery on every corner the, in oh, Bristol. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You can't, you can't move but trip over one. Um, <laughs> and um, so we're kind of talking about that. And we there were a lot of foodies and stuff like that on the on the team, and so we're kind of talking about that. And then um, we just kind of came up with this idea of well, what about what about beer? Okay, well, what would we do? Well, we can make a management game. It's kind of like theme hospital, but like with beer. And we're like, well, people have done that before, but it doesn't really seem that interesting. It just feels kind of like well, it feels like theme hospital, but with beer. And we're like, well, what about a f- simulation game? So a game like we you know we'd seen games around like. Um, you know, we'd seen stuff like uh, Woodworking Simulator, and yeah, yeah. PC Building Sim, for example, who mm. are, uh, uh, which are, you know, which are high quality simulation games, as in they're not your, um, uh, well, I won't mention any by name, but they are, they're, 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 they're not your kind of like joke throwaway games that are kind mm. of like super over the top silly or just bad, just badly put together. Um, they're like high quality and they actually represent the culture around that thing pretty well. Um, we're like okay so then we went and did some research and um we thought okay there might be an audience for this so we started putting a a demo together and um it ended up getting signed by uh, our publisher which is a team called sold out um who fun fact uh for anyone who's old like me uh if you remember going into a video don't shake your head uh, so the uh, the uh, a video if you ever remember going into a physical video game store and buying pc games sold mm-hmm. out with the people who had the white DVDs with the orange strip in the middle and you'd get like budget title releases oh, yes. you remember those I right? do remember oh shit right. I have so many how, of those how else are you going to get Command and Conquer exactly. Tiberian Sun like, um, oh, so Commander. that's the same people they're still around <laughs> they're still doing uh, this, and now, oh, now they're wow. publishing really cool indie games that's um, awesome and um, so Crazy. we we kind of invited them over and they were like oh this looks this looks interesting so we, we ended up doing that um and then to talk about kind of like how we got into it. So I, I'm, I'm one of these people who quite enjoys doing extra stuff around uh, around the projects that we do. Um, I just downloaded the Untapped app, and yeah. um, I, and I went to my I went to my local um, uh, bottle shop and just said, "What's good?" Yeah. Uh, and they were like, "Oh, uh, give me five or six different beers and uh, of different styles." And I was like, "Cool." And then just went off and thought, well, you know, there's you know X amount of money down the uh, down the drain. If I don't like these, it's fine. I, most of these, <laughs> these are all going to taste like Stella, right? Um, ah. And um, and then was like hooked um, and just started doing research. So we put our um, so the team that originally did the pre-production, unfortunately, uh, Andres, you met, missed out on this. Um, uh, we put through the Cicerone beer tasting program. So uh, Ooh, the nice. uh, oh, so yeah. basically you have to. So it, it, they are not Cicerone. I think my qualification says I cannot say I'm a Cicerone. Right. Uh, but it's the it's the beer savvy tasting by Cicerone, yeah. which is basically the first <laughs> entry level qualification. Um, but you you know it, it means you have to go and learn about styles and mm. what is what is an IBU um, mm. and stuff like that. Um, so we put ourselves through that. Um, we went and re- read loads of books. Um, so we started reading things like. Uh, Randy Mosher's home brewing. I'm looking at my uh, my books. Uh, Randy Mosher, a bunch of uh, his stuff. Uh, Mastering home brew, in fact, is the name of it. Um, went and looked at a lot of stuff by Garrett Oliver, uh, who's mm-hmm. very very good at oh, writing yeah. about beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, read read lots and lots of books. There's a really good audiobook called The Brewmaster's Art, which is a really good lecture series about how brewers uh, brewing is done. We really went deep into this stuff. Yeah, we went deep into the culture of it, right? <laughs> so like, so like again, like. My outside perspective was like beer is like it's for football hooligans, um, <laughs> and um, that's us, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's that's all of us. Yeah, We're just football hooligans. Now. Um, and actually, you start to like look into it, and it's like oh, uh, you know, mentioning him uh, again, like Garrett Oliver, like the slow food movement, and mm. he's a huge part of that, and believes that beer is a part of that. Like, um, you go and look at the work of. Um, of the beer critic like Michael Jackson in the 1970s going over to Belgium and just doing that thing where he go he goes over to Belgium mm-hmm. finds all these beers brings them to America and just kickstarts craft beer 
like it's incredible um yeah. so uh, we went and we went and did a load of that research um we do uh beer tastings every now and again uh we do uh you went off to the um festival didn't you the other day yeah so uh, i mean we we just try to immerse ourselves as much as we possibly can so i went to my beer first beer festival here in bristol the bristol nice. beer Fest. uh and that was a lot of fun and it was a lot of just like you know it was it was it was nice to like just try a bunch of different craft beers and be like hey turns out i just don't like sours <laughs> but you will in yeah. time <laughs> so, someone kept it took someone us about kept three years <laughs> someone kept adding me some and it was just like just keep drinking eventually you will say you love them I'm like okay yeah. here we go yeah um but yeah i, I tried so many different types of beer i would have never thought to try and it was it was right. just good um great yeah and like it's really interesting so uh, my partner is um she she is not she's not a beer fan um and she has tried all the beers that i've tried in the last couple of years um and she's found a few that she likes um mm. but it's it's really fascinating to see for people who don't like drink beer very often or don't drink different kinds of beer i should say um there's this feeling of like there's this saying that i that, that you hear from them which is like oh, i don't like the taste of beer mm -hmm. and like it's fascinating because you you hand them like a bottle of Lindemann's Pesh, and it is this beautiful, sweet, peachy. It rips all that sourness out. There's just a little bit of it, just for that little bit of um, <laughs> uh, refreshingness, right? Yeah, right. Okay, there you go. Is that Creek? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a Lindemann's uh, on right, the podcast. <laughs> right, right. Like, I mean, um, so like, and you hand that to somebody, and you're like, that's beer, and they're like, oh, oh. And then you hand them like the biggest, dirtiest, filthiest, you know, pastry stout, and you're like, "That's beer too." That's like, that's, that's more of my. That's more of my... <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and yeah, so um, it was a real awakening, um, and um, uh, really interesting to kind of see this stuff. Um, um, and then in terms of uh, research, uh, so there's some stuff we can't talk about, sure. which we have to keep, which we have to keep secret, um, but. Um, Yes, we we are talking with uh, lots of different people in the industry um, about lots of different things, uh, and um, we are planning on doing a beta at some point in the near future. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea will be to get home brewers and real brewers, as in mass brewers and micro brewers and all that sort of stuff. You know, people who I'm going to nip round to New Bristol Brewing and chuck a I don't know USB stick or whatever it is at them and say, please play this. Um, uh, you know we want people to play the game and give us feedback and say like does this feel right does this uh does this belgian double look exactly what you think it should look like um <laughs> so um yeah there's lots of research going on and lots of very interesting things that, that we are that are in progress within the industry mm. uh, that we'll talk about at some point later on down the line i'm sure nice uh, that's excellent like you always think like you know when there's a you know if a video game company and it's like okay what game should we make next there's kind of this you know almost homebrew kind of thing it was like we make things that we're passionate about but sure. the fact that it was opposite for you that mm -hmm. it's like i'm getting into beer because of like this is what we could make a game about that's 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 fascinating and i think that's so cool it's, it's uh, like, what... Yeah, I mean, if you think that's cool, for Acton Cthulhu, I did the marketing mm. for it. I read all of the works of Lovecraft. Oh, no. uh, it was, uh, it was, it was not good. Uh, so, uh, what's up with yeah. he's, not it, a, he's not the nicest a bit of guys, dodgy. is he? Yeah. Not, not, not <laughs> ideas about how the world works, but um, uh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, the you know the big thing for us is um, yeah, as you say, like um, it's to give a kind of authentic mm. representation of beer. It's not to kind of. Um, I think if you look at, you know, there are a couple of other kind of, there have been beer games that have been made in the past, and a mm -hmm. lot of them kind of focus on like, getting drunk! <laughs> or like, you know, you play Grand Theft Auto and it's like, oh, I've smashed four of these back and now my controls are funny. Um, <laughs> and really, like, when you talk to craft beer fans, like, sure, the alcohol is part of that, that nice feeling that alcohol gives you, like, can give you. Um, mm -hmm. And the sort of social, like um, the sort of social lubrication that it provides, is 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 definitely a part of the appeal of beer. Um, but very few craft beer fans are like, "Oh, mate, I was smashing back near uh, like Sierra Nevadas last night." Like, 
no one's talking like that. It's actually about the, you know, it's about enjoying the thing, right? Well, you didn't listen to the first few podcasts, <laughs> it's own, but, have you? Right, right, sure. <laughs> sure. Which I was not a part of. Like, <laughs> ben, that's so assuming that you yeah, <laughs> just a little. I mean, when we, you know, again, like I, I, um, we, we started the podcast up because um, uh, Alex, who uh, I started the podcast with, um, who we live next door to each other, he was big into his homebrewing, and I'd been round, and um, I, I, I had homebrewed with him a couple of times, and essentially, I was like chief assistant where I opened beers and drank them with him as he did everything. <laughs> and I just kind of went, oh, yeah, cool. Well, yeah, I, I, I get that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we, we you know, he, I, I, I drunk sort of craft beer years and years ago over in the States and had a little bit of it here. But it, Alex really kind of like got me into it. And, and the, the, the podcast, the first few um, weeks of it or maybe even the first year of it is kind of my initial journey through sort of the UK kind of scene as it was about six years ago um, and, and Alex who kind of did a bit of homebrewing and enjoyed things you know he'd been to the, the Bermondsey kind of mile and, and things like that and kind of had his his toe in the water was kind of like oh well you know I know this and I know this and I know this oh but we'll discover these things and we'll discover these things and I think everyone kind of comes at it a little bit differently but to then have something like this which can reach a much larger audience um, and I, I'd imagine you guys have the same kind of marketing issues that, that uh, you know a small podcast in a sea of podcasts has when you suddenly go onto Steam and another 4,000 other games have released on exactly the same day sure. uh, because it's Steam um, uh, that you kind of want that to kind of uh, sort of get to as, as, as many people as possible, but to say retain them and and to do those kinds of things of being like, yes, we, we, we are giving you a game. We are giving you a little bit of an education through mm. this. It, not, you know, you can get as deep kind of into it as you like. Having those threads that can pull people in and, and then keep them there for, uh, you know, how long do people play games these days for about a week and then they move on to something else yeah, usually sure, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, but you know to, to, to also go out to that that broader um, kind of audience as well not necessarily people who play games but people who might be interested in this sort of stuff oh, it's, it's interesting that you've kind of got all of these almost pools to start to sort of pull from and see kind of what sticks for people uh, uh, yeah so it'd be it'd be really interesting to see kind of from what you guys have said about where the game is now then then what the finished product kind of comes out as and and how how that does in terms of not you know in any kind of sort of numbers or financial sort of way but more to see who it has retained you know like a month yeah. down the line reach it, it's yeah. it, you've got these people who are, are gamers who now understand a bit more about beer these people who enjoyed beer who now have then gone on to play other sort of sim games and things and it's opened them up a little bit more to this side the, the gaming side of sort of things so yeah i, I think it's a you know and again it's this nice little niche that we sort of sit in where we think <laughs> games and beer sort of just work very very well together <laughs> <laughs> and also how has this not been done before yeah. how has someone not sort of you know gamified the sort of the home brewing sort of side of things that was literally the exact same question when i like <laughs> stepped aboard uh, and i'm like oh so we're competing with like thousands of these right and peter's <laughs> like no actually yeah. weirdly enough and i'm like oh okay well now we're <laughs> now we're kicking with fire then right yeah, yeah uh, right. but yeah it's it's crazy that it hasn't been before I, I i think at the end of the day it's just because you know it's it's just something that's a little difficult and daunting right mm. to like because you want to balance the fun and but you mm -hmm. w the education and all that stuff and and you want to appeal to people who who do brew beer, but then also don't brew beer, right? There's a lot of things to keep in mind. Like you said, there's a lot of balance, there's a lot of threads. But at the end of the day, I mean, as someone who plays video games, it just has to be fun, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's just, that's the number one thread there. If it's not fun, nothing else matters, right? So yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Can, can I, I don't know if this is a sore point for you lot or 
just throwing things. Hundred days. There's a game called Hundred Days. Yeah, yeah, Hundred Days. Yeah. Is that the wine one? That's the wine, the wine yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. From um, is it Broken Arms? I think it is. I have no idea. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, know. I hate wine. I okay. hate wine. So, okay. Brewmaster is very much my Old. kind of niche. <laughs> I, I don't know. And, grapes, and it? it's like yeah but it's like <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure there are people who it's like i i hate beer who are on the other side of the, the mm. fence and it's like we want to you know engage those people yep. I, I know that game came out recently mm -hmm. uh, about a year ago yeah yeah how much do you, you think that you are like cognizant of like competitors in this space yeah and just like you may to i'm not saying like oh you like coffee the, you know 100, 100 <laughs> i'm just saying how, how much do you look at how that if it came back a, a year ago how much do you look at that model the how time. much yeah. yeah yeah i mean like i mean like it's, it's it's um you know when you make video games what you're making is commercial art mm -hmm. so we are we are making something that is art like it is something that has a lot of you know creative uh um, there's, there's a huge amount of creativity behind it, and that's not just you know the art in the game. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the design, the code, the the testing. Like there's tons and tons and tons of artistic elements uh, that go into a video game. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's commercial as well. Like you know, mm -hmm. we 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 wouldn't be doing this if if we couldn't you know put Bell. bread on our yeah. table and a roof over our head, right? Like we like so um, we absolutely go and look at competitors and um, and that that kind of thing. Um, it's funny you mentioned 100 Days. Um, I've actually talked with um, Eliza over at, at the studio, um, oh. <laughs> and um, they're great. Um, they're yeah. really lovely. They're kind of in a different... Um, their thing is a little bit more kind of um, like space management, so it's a yeah. bit about yeah. like, um, yeah. like figuring out the kind of almost like tetromino of where do you put your vineyard and, and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And it's a really cool game, um, and it seems to have done pretty well, actually. Um, yeah. So... Um, yeah, we look at that kind of stuff and we definitely take inspiration from it. We also look to see how are they talking about their game? So what advertising do they do? Who do they reach? Um, what are the weird outlets that they don't, that wouldn't usually cover games that has covered that? Mm. Um, so, um, so for example, with um, Mars Horizon, for example, that we put out, um, it's very rare that National Geographic or Space.com or whoever it is, you know, the, uh, or New Scientist, it's very rare that they'll talk about a video game. Um, but, you know, Space.com were like, hey, there's this space game. We want to talk about it because it's based on real science. Mm. Um, and it's the same with us. You know, we'll look at ha what 100 Days have been doing and we'll kind of go, oh, that's interesting. It seems like there's some editor at that magazine that seems to like get this... Mm -hmm. This this kind of like Venn diagram of alcohol plus video game. <laughs> um, so so yeah, we'll definitely go and look at that stuff. Um, yeah. There are some uh, there are kind of two kinds of hobby simulation. Well, two kinds of simulation games out there. There is the woodworking simulator, your um, PC building simulator, the yeah. things that we're kind of making. that are those kinds yeah. of high quality. Um, uh, you know, trying to accurately represent the thing. And then there are those ones that we don't want to be a part of that are a little bit further down the line of... Um, uh, they are not exactly particularly kind to the human spirit, shall we say? Mm. Um, like, are they the, hentai games? Or uh, well, I mean, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure there are some <laughs> hentai simulation games, but... Um, the um i'm really i'm really talking about things where again it's those things of like treating alcohol like oh i'm a redneck and i live in the woods and, mm. I'm gonna, like, okay, and, yeah. and it's just like oh come on <laughs> like this isn't actually yeah. like you know yeah. um yeah so so that's we definitely do look at those as well in a kind mm -hmm. of cool let's not do that um like we we look at those games and we sort of go how do they appeal to people um they kind of go for the crazy meme -y, like you know um kind of uh yeah like i don't know oh, slightly... that, oh, we're here for this purpose so yeah like that and that audience likes audience. that stuff yeah. and that's great but that's not mm -hmm. our audience so again yeah. we we definitely do realize where we are in in the space and we very carefully think about how we talk about um, the game and how we present the game so yeah. again a, a good example of this is um uh in the game you can absolutely screw up a beer absolutely mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt you can make some terrible things. um 
but what you can't do is slosh buckets of beer around the around the space right. because that's not really in keeping with what we're doing. Like you wouldn't do that in your hobby, right? Like okay. you wouldn't you wouldn't have this beautiful hobby space that is like the most perfect representation of a hobby space and then just spiff a load of like you know sarts hops all over the shop like you just it, there's no point um well, maybe you wouldn't well uh, yeah, yeah, right right depends how many beers in we are i suppose doesn't it i was gonna say get a few more of those that you're drinking in and then maybe you would but um, um but yeah so yeah we definitely do see uh, see those places and some of them are friendly competition you know we look at stuff like woodworking simulator and we're like awesome can't wait to play that um and it's great because we're not really competing yeah, with, yeah, with yeah, work. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So no, no I, 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 I agree. And every every developer that you know we've talked to, you know, we just see, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. It's exactly. like mm. I, I am very much a person who was like, oh, if I play a wine simulator, I may want to go look at. A, you know, beer simulating game, and it's just like, I think there's such a community, I'm no game developer, but it's such a community and such a, you know, not homogenized, but like such a communal space where it's like, yes, we, we all take ideas from other people, and it's like, yeah, it, it, it's great to see. It, it's like, I'm glad my wine drinking friends who are all, uh, you know, they should not be trusted because wine is disgusting. <laughs> um, ben, you should not be laughing because I know you drink wine. Wine is I beautiful. Great, I, had great, I had a great quote about wine, um, which yeah. was um, which was that um, to make great wine takes a lot of great beer. Um, mm. The idea being that like you need to be out in the fields, you need something refreshing. Yeah. You want a saison? Keep banging them back yeah. to make those you know, <laughs> to make those great wines. Yeah, I, I must admit I do like uh, wine as well, but um, um, yeah, it's. I know. I'm sorry. I'm don't worry, I got your back. <laughs> yeah, you got. Yeah, yeah. There we go. It's just me go. then. It's just yeah. me then. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just great to see these these kind of games. You yeah. know, uh, you know, just just bubble up um, without being too, you know, uh, reminiscent of the actual medium it's just like it's good it's good to see them rise up because i wouldn't have known about 100 days if i didn't know about brewmaster i wouldn't it, it's just great to see these it, they always seem to like come in like uh everyone's making this kind of game everyone's making a left for dead kind of game and it's like i don't think that hurts the medium i think it's just like okay we can let's all play these games then mm. it's like we've all we there's obviously a space for them because we've all been pining for them so yeah it's good to see yes yes um before we before we move on and open up some more beers uh, i'll just comment uh, polar knights is in the twitch chat and says beer simulator is like reading a cooking book when you're hungry it doesn't help at all it's well that, so <laughs> it, it's an interesting point one of the things i find really fascinating about that um <laughs> about that line of argument is that um because I too was kind of sat there like, would this just annoy me? Like if I was playing this and I was thirsty, would this would this get to me? And I kind of think about it in this way: I play Euro Truck Simulator, but you're not going to catch me hauling twenty, you know, two tons of uh, freight across the German. <laughs> Mate, autobahn. you should be because my supermarket's out of fucking loads of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so so it, it's really interesting that we have because um, we had um, we had one person um, we actually had a write up a preview of, of one of the things ages and ages and ages ago um, and um, they sort of said you know what's the point if you can't drink the beer and I kind of thought to myself like I watch cooking programs mm -hmm. I watch I, I you know I watch um, uh, I watch Chef's Table for example Chef's Table is if you've not had a chance to watch it it's amazing it's on Netflix. Yeah, and it's just wonderful. It's, it's about the culture. It's about the history. It's about the food. It's, and obviously, it's about the food as well. And very, also, bougie. very bougie. Very <laughs> bougie. Very um, bougie. And uh, yeah, that's a bit of a sort of insight into my life, unfortunately, isn't it? Um, it revealed a bit too much there. Um, uh, but, you know, like, really interesting to see how these people think about the food and also what you can do with food. And I kind of come away from it like, I kind of feel like we're doing the same, the same sort of thing. I don't expect to play Microsoft Flight Simulator and then be like, 
off to Marbella, lads. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I mean? on the other side of that coin, though, like, I never baked at all before watching British Bake Off, and then I watched British Bake Off, and now I'm a master baker. There right? you go, there you go. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll still try to bake something, and then Absolutely. it'll come out, you know, gross looking, but it'll be delicious, and I'll be like, I did that. And then, you can uh, do a perfect souffle. Exactly. Yeah. And then I'll go back to yelling at the people on the TV like I know better than yeah. It's not working! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, so it, yeah, it, you're absolutely right. It's um, Hopefully it will inspire people to go and make those things. So mm, yes. I, I, th I, think, I think that'll be an interesting thing, actually. It'll be really interesting to see what happens with home brewers, like, like really hardcore home brewers that do it mm -hmm. every single week and, you know, force terrible bottles of ale on their friends at, you know, at regular occasions. Um, it'd be really interesting to see, like, how they react to our game that's the that's the audience mm -hmm. i'm most interested in seeing mm. because yeah if you already fly a cessna in real life do you play microsoft flight, flight simulator i think I, they do yeah they absolutely <laughs> probably, yeah you know what they probably do yeah they, they absolutely do, do. but <laughs> um, i mean you know like and maybe that will be the same with our game it'd be really interesting if it mm -hmm. is um and maybe the element of well you just get unlimited ingredients just go for it just yeah. figure out Make that beer that you always wanted to make with super expensive ingredients. Go for it. Um, mm. Maybe that'll be it. But um, yeah, it'd be really interesting to see how they react to it. Nice. Are we getting yeah. more beers? Yes. yes. Are, we having, are we having more beers? We are having more beers. Oh, let's I, let's, let's, here, let's yeah. take. I was going to say, Andres, you, you've Can already you've already kicked well. in. Yeah, of course. Oh, goodness, <laughs> we'll have a short we'll have a short break. To stick with us, Andres. You can tell yeah. us what beer you're <laughs> drinking. Whilst uh, the others have a wee, or Lucy, you go for you go for your wee. Get your beers. Do what you need to do for for thirty seconds or so. Uh, so continuing my queer brewing journey, I am now mm. drinking their Pilsner, which is called uh, Tiny Dots. Um, and honestly, the first thing that I thought of when I drank it was, "Wow, this is like honey." Um, okay. Not literally like the flavor, but like it was just very sweet and it was very strong, and it was very tasty. Um, looking at the back, I'm not, I, I, I do not have enough of a refined palate to do this myself, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here, <laughs> but, um, uh, it says, uh, hopped with Saz and Tetanang for light floor notes balanced on top of a classic Pilsner base. This is our take on a timeless style brewed with approachability and accessibility in mind. And I can confirm it is very accessible because it is delicious and I cannot nice. see little literally anyone drinking this and thinking this is not drinkable uh is it is it kind of uh does it follow on from the whitbeer very well or, or is it more of a kind of like an afternoon in the sun sort of beer um or both so the, i i think i would have liked it better if i didn't immediately open it after my mm -hmm. previous beer uh i noticed that like i don't know going from one to the other it was a stronger kick it like i don't know if you you saw when i first open it and took a sip of it it like i was like a deer in headlights um <laughs> it, it was just a pretty drastic change of pace uh i think it would have i would have liked it better separately if that's what you were asking mm. yeah no fair fair is it, it, it so it's kind of um what was the what was the percentage on it um uh, it is 4.5 percent okay so nice and light something maybe something maybe easy to kick back in the garden like at the end of the day sort of thing. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, so, Peter, what are you going to uh, what are you going to drink next? Well, I um, am uh, appalled to say uh, that I am... Um, I've been living in Bristol for a really long time now, and I'm still yet to try uh, this little thing. This is Arbor's My Little Sobrani. Oh, yes. I have never had this one before, and I've always seen it. I always loved the can art. Um, and uh, so I just I just thought this is a very good excuse to go and buy a can of that and actually give it a go. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a uh, for those that don't know. So Arbor is actually one of the huge success stories in Bristol, uh, just outside Bristol. No, it is Bristol. Yeah, yeah it, it is Bristol. They're yeah. in the Eastern, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, so it's a uh, five percent. It's a single hop uh, American pale ale, and uh, just a ton of. Sabro, as you would uh, mm. uh, imagine, being called My Little Sabroni. Um, and I really love the ca can art because it's uh, it kind of reminds me of... Is that My Little Pony character? The sub sub I think that's what the play on words, My Little Sabroni. Yes. Uh, and um, I think... So I quite like that. Um, I can't remember what her... What, what was her name? Her, his name? Who was the... Which one was that? Do we remember? 
Oh, I don't my, remember. It's no. My little pony, that's all I know. Ah, yeah, that's all it is. So, um, yeah, single hop APA, uh, which is very exciting. I have absolutely poured this one. This is going to take a little while to settle, I would say. It's very, very, very... The head is just gone for it, which is <laughs> uh, exciting. Right. So I will give you an update. We'll come back. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Uh, Lucy... You, yeah. you, you, you flash your bottle. We've talked about it, sort of, not quite already, tangentially. Uh, what are you cracking into? Yeah, it's a Lindemann's. Mm-hmm. Just find a bottle open because on me. Um, ooh. Me, get the label on because it's a bit askew. Been sweating the bottle a bit. Hmm. Boy, uh, it, yeah, it's the Creek. Pizza. Very nice. 3.5%. Oof. And that I is... don't read Flemish or Belgian or German or. I can read French, but I don't think that's on the bottle. So we're going to go off the seat of our pants here. Boys. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Whilst... I, will, I will explain it, the, the flavour text, so elaborately that you won't even need it. <laughs> you won't even need to know what <laughs> beer is. Good. That, that's fair. That that's every fair. week, and week again, in, week There's out. so many of these when when we do have uh, a Belgian uh, or like something like from Zubrot or something like that, where you you just mm. look at it and go, "It's a beer. Uh, it's brown." Yeah. Uh, Here we go. D- 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 let's go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's Unlike... a Lindemann's Greek, so it's good. So uh, so. Yes. Yes. No. 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 No need for me to say anything. Um, it's uh, good. Almost. Not quite as as bad as those, but. Left-handed giant, which I'm going to have next. Again, oh. they don't put much info on their cans. Yeah. Uh, I've got Directional Dance, which is a hazy double IPA, eight percent. It's got Simcoe Cryo, Citra Cryo, Sabro Cryo, and a Qnot in it. Oh. And that's all they tell me, apart from allergens, perhaps. Uh, but again, I will crack this open, and we can come back to me in a moment. Uh, I'm just going to go because, as I forget. Yeah, uh, you need oh, your pot, you need a proper lo- opener. Yeah. You see, you're calling me bougie. You got a cap <laughs> and a cork in there. Exactly. If I was real bougie, I'd have one. I'd have a bottle opener right here. But not that like I was going to say, not that I ever drink bottles anymore. <laughs> but I, I don't know why this still sits by my on my desk. You know, like just in the off occasion that I uh, that I have one. You're bougie. Yeah, well, that's it. I just like to look at it. Um, perfect. Uh, you you do what you need to, Luce. Uh, Peter, okay. we will come back to <laughs> you for the arbor. Has it settled slightly? Look at that. It's like an ice cream. Jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah, stick your nose uh, in. It's, it's I'll, I'll stick it in. Yeah, I mean, you know. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely smell the Sabro hops. Like that kind of. Almost like slightly vegetal kind of um, yep. kind of hop to it. Um, it's got yeah. It's, it it smells. It it doesn't have that thing that American parallels sometimes have, which I get slightly annoyed about when you get that like oh, it smells incredibly like tropical fruit, and then you drink it and you're like, doesn't taste anything like that. Yeah. But okay. Um, so yeah, yeah, that really um, kind of intense. Uh, yeah, almost um, yeah, it's sort of resinous. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. And it's got that. It's not. It's not. Uh, it. It's not butter, as in diacetyl or anything like that. It's not like that. But it's. It's got that kind of. Almost creamy. There's a bit of kind of. Uh, I want to say butter, but that's not the right thing. It's kind of. There's a. There's a kind of. Um, wholesomeness and earth earthiness to it that mm-hmm. I kind of associate with that with that flavour. Yes. And that that I think Sabro really kind of shows all of the time. It's like really, really into- I had a uh, double IPA that was just just a Sabro bomb and it was like oh god. Like you know that really is like okay well I'm just gonna have this one this evening and just give my toast buds a rest. But um yeah this is uh, this is all right. Mm. Mm. I can see why and again, talk about how much of a success story it is. Um, I want to say I might have picked this one up in Sainsbury's. Oh yes, uh, yes, they did drop a couple of beers in Sainsbury's, so it could yeah. be one of those. Yeah. And it's it's the 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 cool thing I think about Arbor is they've they've continued that good tradition that some craft beer originating 
uh, kind of companies have kept when they've ended up in um, like supermarkets and stuff like that. Like you go and pick up um, a bottle of, um, I think if you go and po uh, pick up a bottle of, let's say for example, something like, like you know, like a, a, a punk IPA, for example, it's really up and down. Like it's like, okay, you, you're clearly making so many hectoliters of this stuff that mm. like some of it's just sat around for yeah. a while and it's just kind of like eh. and some of it's great you know some of it's you know very tasty stuff you know they're, they're, they're very popular for a reason um but th when i when i look at like certain things like this when i look at stuff like uh, when when i give um certainly the belgian ones that have gone massive maybe even been bought by like inbev like duvel and stuff like that and you're like this is still a banger this is still a really good beer but you're making so much of it now that is you know like and I think Arbor's managed to keep that going, which I think is really good. They've not they've not fallen to that thing of like, well, now we can just start, you know, now we don't have to use as, as many of the hops, or maybe we can get them, you know, we can just use, I don't know, um, you know, inferior quality ingredients and stuff like that. And I'm always really impressed when I see these kind of beers that end up in mass market locations that are still just really great. Because um, it's obviously, again, lowering the barrier to entry for people, right? Like mm, mm. you can go and get a bottle of Rochefort Eight, I think, in Sainsbury's now for like two pound fifty. Really? And yeah. If, if yeah, you're an American, yeah. if you're an American listener, you're like, I just paid twenty six dollars for one. Like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's it it. So yeah, like, and, and I think all of that is really really good for sort of bringing new people on board. Um. Absolutely, yeah. it 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 is a good gateway, uh, and I think people will you know. Uh, there's been lots of chat about beers in supermarkets recently over the last sort of year or two. You know, the whole thing with the kind of like cloud water going in, uh, sure. um, what like the start of the year roughly, yeah. and kind of how it's divided the more vocal uh, craft beer uh, drinker in various forums and and, and spaces like that. Uh, um, but I don't, and I I mean. Personally, I don't see it taking away from bottle shops. I think it's only kind of a good thing in terms of like being a gateway. I don't own a bottle shop, don't run a bottle shop. I don't work in a bottle shop in any way, so I cannot give you facts. And we can we can go and chat to Lewis, maybe at Bottles and Books, or, or, or someone else somewhere and, and see if there has been some kind of impact on this. Yeah. But I think it's good to just get people into it. And you know, as, as we've all found our various ways kind of into things, you know, you may get your kind of, uh, um, maybe not your Carling kind of drinker, but someone who is sort of on the fence, or they've, you know, they've had a couple of, um, say, uh, Bristol Beer Factory beer. It's a little bit more kind right. of like traditional. They've had it, yep. you know, a pint in the pub, and it's kind of uh, more malty and stuff. And then they go into Morrison. You know, the Morrison's in Fish Ponds here has has uh, Independence in there, and they see that and they go, "Oh, I'll grab a couple of those." Yeah, absolutely, it's something I know. And then they might go across and try another couple of the craft beers, and that then leads them to the bottle shop or, or, or somewhere else to pick up more sorts of things. So it, it, it's kind of again a similar kind of way as having a podcast about games of beers about having a game about beers that you can bring more people into the space and then have a much broader kind of uh, audience from it and, and have much bigger conversations uh, around about that and i think as you say with arbor um being able to maintain their quality even though they've they've, they've bumped up and I, I don't know whether they are still everything is being brewed kind of in their um in their existing site or whether they've had to go somewhere else to be able to meet sort of the the demand for going into the supermarkets um so again more questions to ask in that sort of sense but we can direct those at, at those guys um i did have a question before we move on to lucy's beer but you, you guys get to sit with us and, and have a few business is this something you guys do as a studio as well do you get to kind of get together at certain times whether that's in an evening or kind of on a, on a friday after work or something and sit there and, and take in all of these beers and have a, have a lot of the team kind of not been interested in beer and then lent into it so much or has it mostly been kind of you know maybe the two of you and a, and a few other people and everyone else is just more into the research side of things um yeah i mean i i think that there's a um i mean obviously things have been quite challenging uh over the last yes oh, I, don't know. I don't know if you've noticed uh but uh, <laughs> things have been uh, a little bit tricky recently um 
So yeah, there is a little bit of that. Um, we used to go to um, a really fantastic uh, pub called the Hillgrove uh, uh, on uh, Friday night. Uh, really, obviously, amazing. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, just you know, you'd obviously see great, great beers around that sort of time. That was just as we were doing the sort of demo for for Brewmaster at the time, mm. um, and that was great. Um, and that was definitely a social thing. Like, there's definitely a lot of that social stuff. We've done beer tastings before. Um, I had a, a few people over to go through a, a flight of like eight or nine different beers and again there were people there who again that that idea of like oh i don't really know, think i like beers but i'll give it a go mm-hmm. um but um i think more our evenings are mostly spent i don't know um murdering one another in um uh what's it called what's that one that we like the one with the murder and the spaceship and the, the uh, little uh, orange, the among little us guys. is that Not what it's among called? us yeah yeah ones yeah among us yeah yeah that one so we'll do oh, that. Oh, I thought point. you were talking about pub. Not, not oh, right, 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 yeah. Well, there's some, there are some pretty rough pubs in Bristol. Um, but, um, yeah, like, you know, playing Among Us and, um, you know, hanging out and playing video games and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a real... Um, one of the one of the slight things that we always have to kind of... Um, we always have to kind of balance is... Um, obviously, we're making a video game about alcohol. And um, one of the things that we have to be careful around is that we're not we're not basically saying to people like you need to drink beer yes because that's a very different like you know doing it for fun you know you do it in your evenings and all that sort of stuff that's great um but yes yeah, so we have to be a little bit careful around that kind of stuff but yeah there's there's you know there's times when we'll get together and have beers and and hopefully that will we'll do a lot more of that when we come you know come back together and things yeah. open up and everyone's double vaxxed and all that stuff i mean i feel like especially coming from my perspective who you know i've joined the company in the past year i joined during the height of the mm. pandemic, essentially. Yeah. So yeah. I've never met half of my teammates, right? And Bonkers. Yeah, it's mm. it's really weird. But it's like, you know, things like the Bristol Beer Fest, I got to meet a few people and it was it was a good time. And then, mm. you know, uh, when someone else in the company is like organizing, like, hey, let's get together and play some board games. Mm. You know, and, and like, it, like, that's something that I'm looking forward to, to like actually like yeah. meet and chat with people. So like, Yes, there is some like beer tasting stuff, as Peter said, but there's also a lot of like, you know, just interact with each other face to face and around. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of like <laughs> focus right now, just since we can't really do that. Yeah, right. uh, on the regular. So yeah. nice, good, good. Um, Lucy, we will jump back into you then for your uh, for your Lindemans. Yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the uh, creek, and I mean, you lot were saying like. You know, people think beer in one way. It's just like, oh, they think of very much macro beer. I mean, this is very much a what you can get to. I hate them toast, and I hate saying this about one of the best beers there is. But it's like if you said some to someone, oh, this is what Vimto is in the beer, and they taste it, and it's like, oh yeah, that's nice. It's just like yeah. It, it, it's crazy how like Belgian beers and you know even even anything like Czech and German beers. It's just like if you give something, if you put that in front of someone and said, "This is what beer is," especially in our country, especially in England, and you say, "This is what beer is," they would enjoy it. So it's yeah. like um, extremely fruity, extremely you know cherry getting all those cherry flavors it's not like oh there's just a hint of cherries like this is the embodiment of the beer it's just very cherry like very very creek very and it's not too sour that's the thing yeah i find it quite sweet Mm. this one um and yeah it's, it's a very cheap beer it's like you always think lambic sours are just very much very expensive very you know Okay, yeah, it has to be at this point where it's like, Andreas, you, you say that you don't like sour beers, but it's like, and someone would give you, you know, someone would give you a Lindemann, someone would give you this beer, and it's like, this isn't sour at all. This is very much a gateway beer into like, oh, this is what beer can be if you don't like beer, mm. or if you don't like sours, or if you don't like uh, very fruity beers. This is just perfect. It's mm. and I say that I bought this for what two pounds. It's like mm. it's nuts. It's not, why do I not live in Belgium? 
<laughs> Have you tried their Cuvée Rene at all? Yes, yes, that is oh, fantastic. That's an absolute yeah. banger, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, and that's also very cheap. It's yeah. like, I, th I think when I was at the shop, I was like, mm, I've had that before. It's like, and I had that recently. Should I, should I pick up this or should I pick up that? But yeah, the Rene is very mm. fantastic. Yeah, good and stuff. So, yeah, proper gateway if you are reticent about sour beers. So this is very sweet though. I don't know why I'm saying anything about sour. This is I don't like sweet beers and this is on my precipice, so it's just like yeah. It, it, it is yeah. interesting that a lot of those Belgian ones which you kind of almost be classed as a sour mm. aren't really yeah like, there's so much yeah. more sweet than that and so much more you know full of fruit in a in the opposite end to what we would have uh, or think of as kind of like a sour made from um you know more of a british kind of uh, sour side of things i think um so yeah. it's, it, it's, I mean, it, it's weird because it has literally on the label it says lambic beer and it has five che four cherries four Patman cherries beneath it and it's like when you think of cherries, do you really think very sour? I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Pac-Man? <laughs> Pac she's, she's very sweet. That's fine. Whereas Pac-Man himself, game. incredibly sour. Oh, um, he is, isn't he? <laughs> let's move on. Uh, I will very quickly just mention that this left-handed giant uh, beer is very nice. Um, it is... Uh, it, it very much follows the latest trend of double IPAs and hits that more uh, vegetal, um, more earthy side of things. We're not we're not in juice bomb territory anymore. I wish we were. Um, I'd, I'd happily go back a couple of years before all the world just exploded uh, and just have juice bombs every day and be ignorant to everything that was to come. Um, but it's 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 all right. I will absolutely drink this. It's it's very similar to the good chemistry in that it's a nice beer to drink, but I wouldn't want much more than the sort of the four forty mil can uh, kind of gives me. I think a pint. Um, of this is about right um, mm -hmm. you, you, you probably get sort of to the last few sips of that and maybe move on to to the next sort of thing but it's kind of almost an end of a night beer you know I think all of these double IPAs which have this more vegetal kind of feel to them that are a bit more earthy that even don't have that bitterness and a lot of them aren't going to you know it's not a juice bomb with a nice <laughs> bitter finish it is just this much more flat earthy kind of flavour to these beers and that's kind of almost going back a little bit to maybe more traditional kind of English ales and things where they're a bit more malty, they're a little bit more flat and things. I think we've almost kind of, we've not quite gone full circle, but we're almost mm. arcing back to that. People kind of pulling back and reining back and trying to balance out more uh, uh, more flat kind of flavours and not be sort of in your face and, and maybe be a bit more open to everybody and making something that more people can kind of get on board with uh, and we you know i think it was the quantock uh, double ipa i had last week and, and a day have definitely gone down this route verdant yes. have very much gone down this route um so some of the bigger breweries left-handed giant verdant there are, are, are kind of in this space at the moment um let's get it, out of this space let's just let's, yeah, let's it, fucking move it, on let's let's get the next double ipa <laughs> style in please it's, it's, it's weird where beer is I think when you're in it like all of us it's just like it's very hard to differentiate where those incremental and sometimes small steps are where it's like if you read on like I don't know Telegraph or something it's like beer is here beer is there beer is sours now beer is and I, I couldn't imagine making it right <laughs> Which one is what you lot are doing? So it's just like, hmm, where is BNA? Really? It'll be anywhere in five months. And that must be really hard when you're making a video game. Yeah, when you're working on sort of facts yeah. of two, three, four year development cycles. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's it's pretty tough. I, I, think, I think, yeah, for us, the big thing there is to make sure that we always kind of represent a broad spectrum. So mm -hmm. um, uh, 
Andres uh, mentioned uh, earlier about a campaign, essentially. Mm. Um, so our different characters kind of represent those different areas, and and we kind of go quite broad with that stuff. So, you know, uh, you know, the idea that like um, beer is like the heart of the community, right? You always mm -hmm. hear about the like the pub being the heart of the community, and um, so like there'll be a character that kind of talks about like, beer in the way that like it's used for celebration, it's used for uh, picking up morale it's used for you know sports to you know you get to the end of a long cycle and that's all you want you want you want a, beer, a, a glass of beer in the pub um and equally um you know there's going to be people talking about like you know the the kind of um uh the kind of uh societal ramifications as like uh how do we brew beers in a more ethical effective kind of mm. uh, ecological uh, sort of a way do we try and keep it as not broad that's not the right word but like what we what we're definitely not doing is like chasing yeah like because if we'd started then like when we started making the game it was basically like hazy boys for life and like <laughs> you know and we could have just made a game about that right like but but the thing is as soon as you see a trend the thing with video games is that um as soon as you see a trend it's far too late to get involved mm. because it's, it's going to yeah. take you a yeah. couple of years to actually make that thing um, so it really is a weird coincidence that you end up with all of these games that feel a little bit like Left 4 Dead or a little bit mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, you know, yeah. um, I don't know, what was the, the what was the other one where it's a game show and you have to run around? Like 400 Battle Royales all come out at the same time. <laughs> right, yeah. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah. What was that one? Did we play that one? Fall Guys? Fall Guys, oh, Fall yeah, Fall Guys, one. yes. Right, right, like everything's a sort of Battle Royale. And like yeah. it all sort of comes out at the same time. I Fall Guys is one of them. The slandering of Fall Guys. What's that? I will not take the slandering of Fall Guys. I, 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 I loved Fall Guys. I love Fall Guys. Yeah. Do not get me wrong. <laughs> uh, but um, but it, you know it is one of those like you know one hundred to one uh, mm. games, and they all sort of came out around the uh, you know space of about a year, two years. Um, so it's weird. It's weird that that happens in the game. Yeah. I don't know yeah. who it is that's doing that. Again, it's, it's, it's crazy that these two kind of mediums just you know yeah quick as the beer industry is in like flowing through this style that style video games are just like yeah, it's yeah. Kind of again i wonder whether it comes down to like community so uh, you know all, everyone who brews bristol uh, who brews beer in bristol that's too many bees for me to say everyone who brews beer in bristol talk to each other yeah but you guys you know reached out to the uh to the, the to the dev team of 100 days and and other sort of you know you will be talking to other developers as well these trends come through maybe just little conversations that that people have and that starts and you go oh you guys are, yeah 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 we've been we you know we've had these kinds of things and there must be tons of um you know projects that are sort of cast on uh, uh, the, the house mark who recently mm -hmm. made like Returnal, they had a Battle Royale in development. Um, I, I played like about an hour when it was in Alpha, I think, like maybe two or so years ago. Yeah. And they kind of just went, yeah, yeah. We, we, we've sort of almost missed that window that all of these have suddenly, you know, come. we, we start, obviously had this idea and started a little bit too late. Everything else came out and we've just sort of missed it completely. So game shelved i mean even returnal is kind of an example of that isn't it yes like yeah. the 80s came out what three months six months before that and it was like another story heavy you know triple yes well i guess super giant is a triple a but like you know what i mean like a very high quality story based mm. roguelike and yep. it's kind of crazy that those games came out so close to each other because you know they weren't copying each other because of absolutely the yeah. Cycle is. Yeah. but it's so crazy that they came out so close to each other Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember when um, Infamous and Prototype came out at the same time? Yeah, almost three? like almost the same week. Yes, like it was so <laughs> weird. Yeah, wait, was like... wait, wait, wait. You are forgetting Armageddon and uh, the Elijah Wood film that I've forgotten the name of. Deep this Impact. Was a deep Impact. Oh yeah, <laughs> Armageddon. <laughs> this. I don't care about your video game scenarios and your right. coincidences. This sure. was the first one. Armageddon Deep Impact. Absolutely true. You know what? <laughs> Completely. And, it, and it, it's, it's strange, isn't it? Maybe there's something about the cultural zeitgeist that people just kind of tap into. Mm. And they're like, oh, maybe people want this now. 
We're um, all going to die from an asteroid. That's what everybody wants. Right. right. It's not what we're all going to about. With a detonation. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Bruce Willis. Yeah. Right. Him, yeah. 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 Everyone wants Bruce Willis. Well, I, absolutely. <laughs> or, or Steve Buscemi. But... Um, you have to make a video game with Bruce Willis in it, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> next, next game, next game, or, or DLC. Let's game for the Brewmaster DLC. Let's do oh, that. Wait, to, well, to be, Call it, of Duty did the oh, Bruce Willis no shoes DLC. So. Why don't we do Bruce Willis? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I'm, I had a negative reaction because uh, I get a lot of puns from Peter every day at work. So. <laughs> Yeah. It's, an, it's, well, become an H, it's, it's become a true HR issue. Uh, which <laughs> I mean, a... we're, yeah, normally, Adol's here to just drop puns on us about every five minutes as well. And we, he hasn't been here for sort of six weeks, so we've been we've been missing them absolutely. Okay. Well, um, nice. But you could, yeah, you could pay a ton of money for Bruce Willis to do about five lines, yeah. and then well, they just right. repeat constantly through Absolutely. the game as you do things. Yeah, it's, 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 it's almost. Passionate Bruce Willis. You remember when he wasn't just just <laughs> making films that just went straight to DVD? Yeah, I missed that. Bruce I don't think Willis. Bruce Willis remembers that time. <laughs> <so> I... <laughs> I'm too busy diving into like piles of gold coins like Scrooge McDuck. Okay. Mm. Like Scrooge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Bruce Willis aside, this left-handed giant beer is pretty good. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> so we've 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 covered kind of Orc Digit. We've covered uh, a Brewmaster. Let's jump um, kind of into into what either of you are, are playing. Kind of what you gravitate towards. You know, you're, you're making a sim game, but do you just is it sim games we've mentioned some other games you play so i know it's not just sim games that you guys play but what are you playing at the moment what have you enjoyed sort of over the last kind of a uh, few months or through the summer uh so i've been kind of playing a lot of different things simultaneously uh, mm. which is kind of a problem i should probably focus on one thing uh but yeah right <laughs> um i've been working my way through monster hunter stories 2 which mm -hmm. is the monster jrpg peter mentioned earlier monster hunter rise uh so you can probably tell uh i love me some monster hunter <laughs> uh so it's kind of like a uh pokemon-esque uh capture a monster and then make them fight other monsters um uh probably not against their will the game suggests that they want to fight for you but who knows right? <laughs> <laughs> but not sure about that. yeah exactly. <laughs> But it's very it's a it's a very by the numbers JRPG. Silent protagonist for some reason, even though he's very expressive and has a a story relevance. And then there's a mascot who's an animal who does all of your talking for you, but it's kind of annoying. So it's it's about your by the numbers JRPG, but it's fun. I like the battle style. They they do things enough uh, differently than Pokemon, where it doesn't feel like straight like a ripped off. So mm. that's kind of nice. Um, and then also it's just fun to pit my favorite monsters from monster hunter against each other um so i've been playing that is that recently. the is that the switch exclusive one it's also on pc oh okay it is also, cool. yes so uh, were you a monster hunter fan before it became famous before uh, rise or yeah i'm a bit of a hipster i played the original <laughs> <on> the <PS2. laughs> okay. you like, played the original on the ps2 <laughs> i'm sorry you played the original on the ps2 yeah i know you that think is... i'm like I'm like super young, Peter, but I was old enough hey, to hey, have come on now. a controller that, in my hand. That is, that is, yes, I'm just jealous. That is hardcore. That that mm. version does not muck about. That, no. that first PS2 one. No, it doesn't. Uh, it was very janky, though, so you could yeah. cheese the crap out of it. Um, but, yeah, it. Uh, uh, I'd love me some Mosher to talk about yeah. it today. So I'm mm. nice. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so um, my uh, in a in another life, I uh, did um, quite a lot of um, uh, journalism stuff, and I tended to work. I, I worked for a lot of mobile game sites, um, and uh, so I like to kind of keep my eye in with uh, mobile games. Um, so currently, I'm playing a game called Everdale, uh, which is a it's the new one from Supercell, who are the folks that made Clash of Clans, oh, and. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it is. Um, it, it, it co- I haven't really been keeping up with their work because I kind of thought it was a slightly derivative. But um, this new one of theirs is really fascinating in that it's a um, it's a nice game. It's me- it's meant to just be nice. So you're sure. just building a village and you're hanging okay. out with your friends, and it's meant to be very kind of low energy and low um, uh, low stress. Um, and I've kind of been I've been looking at it from a sort of uh, video game producer kind of perspective where I'm kind of looking at it and going like how, how I keep playing it so clearly it's it's doing something yeah but there's not it's, it's just timers like it is just mm. timers <laughs> um so I'm kind of uh, kind of interested to see how that's been um working out um and then beyond that um I've been playing uh I've been playing uh I don't know if you've heard of it it's a game called Return of the Obra Din oh that game's amazing we love oh. that we oh. love that here. Uh, so, what a what an amazing game! Yes, um, yes. Uh, uh, a game that made me. I just sat down and went. I need a notepad and pen. Yep. Yes. Like, right. Like. Um, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was wonderful. Um, so, uh, for those that don't know, it's a first person sleuth them up, I suppose, uh, in which you use a time device to rewind time to the point at which people died on a boat. Uh, called the Obra Dinn, and uh, it's all presented in Apple Mac 2 sort of um, point-and-click adventure visual style. Um, it, it's really, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, uh, and uh, the entire, I, the goal of the game, your end objective is figure out how everybody on the boat died. Mm. Um, or if they died. Um, and if they did die, who killed them? Or what killed them? Uh, so yeah, um, uh, the the reason I the reason I've really been enjoying it is um, I really like well really well scoped games. Like it feels like a game that is very well. Um, they could have made that game really over the top, really lavish, yes. really gone like hardcore into like super realism vi- in terms of visuals. They could have had lots and lots and lots of animations. Um, they could have had all sorts of different things, but instead. It's you're basically just wandering around static scenes, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and you're interacting with menus and saying, well, I think it's this person with this person. You know, it's Colonel Mustard in the diary. You know, uh, with, <laughs> in the drawing room with the with the candlestick. And um, but but you have to really admire the restraint of somebody uh, who who is able to kind of take a murder mystery and make it a really straightforward game. And I and I guess you wouldn't really expect anything less of. Um, uh, of uh, the person who made Papers, Please, yeah, um, which is very, again, again, a, a very restricted uh, kind of mm. a game. So, um, yeah, I, I've, I've just finished that and um, really enjoyed it. So, oh, wow, um, you finished it. Oh. Yeah, it's it's. it's I, I might I might have had a, a cheeky little. I do have a second monitor, so I might have had a <laughs> cheeky little look at, uh, at like one of the answers at least. That's fine. <laughs> just one. It's just just the one. <laughs> promise. Promise. I've heard it's not. a game where you definitely like you oh. need to do a little bit of cheesy guessing a little bit in, yeah. unless you're like a genius just, just stop yeah. what you're doing just play it right now. yeah it is it's superb yeah. absolutely superb yeah. uh so, so I want you guys on every week i want to talk about him once a hunter and every time again every week. <laughs> come every week please <laughs> for sure for sure uh, I'm gonna. Sorry, I want to jump back in here. I didn't yeah, realize, go for it. I I, I didn't want to talk more than about one game, but since Peter got to talk to, you, I want to talk hey. about another one. No, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm an enabler. I've got everything you want to talk about. So uh, I picked up a game called uh, Water Myth recently. Um, oh, which is, I've heard so many good things about this. It's great. Tell me more. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 sort of like uh, how do you describe it? It's it's a bit like a tactical turn-based game, but sort of very much more in the D&D kind of mode a little bit where you're doing these kind of like one-shot miniature campaigns a little bit um and the hook is uh the story is procedurally generated um with you kind of sort of influencing the direction the story goes with your various decisions and things (laughs) um and it's it's really fun and uh I've been having a great time with it. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's this thing where, like, you know, what if my characters, like, you know, got a, a specific affliction where now they have, like, stone growing all over them? 
and then that that happened in one campaign and that sort of carries on to like you know future plot lines and future campaigns and gets kind of woven into those stories it's really cool and it's really it's honestly really impressive um is it is it sort of like one of those like choose your own adventure kind of books is it here is choice a turn to page 54 here is choice b turn to page 106 or, or or is it a little bit more open than that um it's a little i'd say it's a little bit of a and b you do get these like binary dialogue decisions mm. where it'll be like you know I, I i approach the magical well and it's like do you drink from the well or do you step into the well or do you leave it alone and it's very obvious you know an a b or c decision and then there's other times where it'll be like one of my characters died in battle and he was romantically involved with another character and my party oh, member oh nice and now my other party member is sad about yes. it and wants to build that That's party cool. member a shrine and wants to visit it every once in a while. Like, so okay. some of it is very organic and some of it is very like, oh, choose your own adventure. Mm. But the fact that it has both is so cool. I absolutely, I, it's it's just absolutely amazing, and highly recommend if you like tactical turn-based sort of like you know RPG type games, and if you like uh. You know, it's it's because it's procedurally generated. You, you, there's a little bit of you gotta accept that when things are a little weird. It's just like, well, my character just died, and now we're having a fun little romp around the woods, <laughs> making jokes at each other. But okay, <laughs> um, but like if you could kind of uh, suspend that, you know, procedural disbelief, then it's 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 really great. Nice, nice. I, I, I mean, that absolutely sounds like something I would I just I lose a week to. Yeah. I know we've got good guests when they mention Return of the Overdin and Wilderness. It's like, it's like perfect guests. <laughs> good, good. Uh, uh, amazing. Um, I'm glad we've got to, to to jump into sort of the the games that you guys have been uh, have been playing as well. Uh, just before we come back to our beers and have a little bit of chat about what we've drunk this evening and finish it for this week. Is there kind of anything further you guys would like to add um, just to let our listeners know either about Brewmaster, about, uh, you know, what you guys are doing or any anything else that they should be out there kind of playing at all? Oh, uh, not 100% sure. Um, <laughs> let me have a think. Let me have a think. Remember what, what you're not allowed to say. Yeah. And then right, just say all right, the other yeah. things. Just say all the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave it to you for a second and I'll have a think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, put us on the spot. So, um, what, 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 what else can we tell you about it? So, um, okay. So we have, uh, uh, like I say, um, we will be having a a, a beta. We were calling yes. it, well, no, an alpha, an early alpha, public yeah. alpha. Um, <clears throat> so we'll be having that uh, in the next few months. Uh, so uh, the best thing to do to get involved in something along those lines, we have a newsletter for the studio. And what we do is we send one out every month. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the way to get onto the beta. Uh, 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 that's the way to get onto the alpha. Um, and we'll also have lots of information about, you know, um, the things that we've been up to. We have a dev blog as well. So on Steam, we actually say like, here's what we've been working on. And if you're interested in how games get made, we actually show things. We show how the sausage is made, mm-hmm. uh, which is which is fun uh, because it's kind of grody and uh, and a bit awkward and. It's kind of interesting to see like a game developing over time. So you'll see, you know, weird like you know Unreal Engine four menus and like uh, pouring going wrong, but like some of it's going right and uh, uh, you know all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely sign up for the newsletter, which is over on our website. Um, and um, oh, have we got a secret we can tell you? Oh, uh, should we? Oh, should we? What was the? I I never knew whether or not it was real or not. Do you remember the um, when we found the um, when we found the shakers, the ingredient shakers? In the, oh yes, in the wall? I still don't know what the heck was happening there. No, no. <laughs> Do you want me to describe it? Just because I feel like since I I have no idea. So one of was it one of our devs looked through a wall and there was some salt shakers looking what could only be described as some sort of ritual to summon some sort of something. I don't know. They were like, there was ominous lights and there was synchronized shaking of the salt shakers. Yeah. yeah. 
And we still I don't know. know I like that this. In there, but <laughs> we're still not sure who put it in, or if it was like a bug, or it must. It can't have been a bug, can it? it a cult no. beer brewing. It's got to be somebody. Yeah, Secret, right. Yeah, yeah. this weird ritual. Um. So, <laughs> so we're sort of so we're sort of thinking whether or not we're gonna sort of make reference to that somewhere in one of the story Ship things. Ship it. Keep yeah, it in we, the game. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly right. Someone on the team is is hiding secrets in the game, so yeah. there yeah. you go. Look for them. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Because they were a surprise even to me. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to love that when you get into work one day and you're just sort of doing something like, what the fuck is <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really like, huh? Odd, isn't it? Yeah, very... Uh... So yeah, yeah, maybe they'll be in there somewhere. Amazing, nice, I'll nice. <laughs> um, let's jump back to our beers then, and if we have any final words on what we've drunk this evening or any preferences, um, if you have a, a favourite beer from the evening, uh, Andre, we started with you. Let's jump back into you. Do you have any final thoughts on your beers, or if if you have a favourite from the evening? Uh, yeah. So I think my favorite was actually not one of the two i talked about but this last one oh uh, you've opened a third amazing yeah it's the queer brewing pillow yeah uh and it's called existence as a radical act um and it's been i think my favorite it's nice. uh it's a little more hoppy than the others um uh, a little bit less like fruity and all that but it's really really good and i i I'm absolutely loving this final beer. Mm. <laughs> See, that is the dedication of the developers behind Brew Monster. They will drink three beers on the podcast, not two. <laughs> it's after work. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> good, good. Uh, Peter, we'll jump to you. Uh, final yeah, thoughts. Um, these were fine. These were absolutely fine. Um, I, I like my little Sabroni. That, that's mm -hmm. quite fun. I like the can. Um, and it's quite nice to drink. Uh, the Newtown Park table beer, again, pretty good. I would drink that, you know, on a on a um, on a nice sort of warm day out in the garden or something like that. Just kind of if if you don't want that kind of like haziness that you get sometimes in if you drink sort of at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. um, but I think my favourite beer uh, is actually probably that uh, that Whit beer that uh, you were drinking, Andre. So <laughs> that that is actually my I, I've I've had that one myself and that is beautiful. Uh, so that is the one I would recommend. Yes. Personally. Yes. Bye. Good. Queer, queer uh, brewing dominating the conversation this mm -hmm. evening so far. Then, uh, Lucy, um, how about you? Yeah, the whiplash usually whiplash wins every single week, but uh, the water jump, the IPA, uh, there was just a there was something missing about it. I think. Okay. Uh, you know, if you, if you want a good full fruity IPA from, especially from Whiplash, you could probably do better, to be honest. It, it was a bit underwhelming mm. in terms of uh, the fullness of the beer, the fruitiness. Yeah, just just not my favourite Whiplash beer, to be honest. But, I mean, when you're going up against Lindemans... <laughs> It's 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 hard to compete, but yeah, the Kavik, uh, or the Creek, it's just a Creek from uh, Lindemans. It's so it's so sweet. I mm. forgot how sweet it was. You know, um, yes, it's a lambic, and you expect a bit of sourness, but it's so sweet. It's so <sighs> not frothy, but it's like it's got that kind of like you know like kind of strawberry fruity cherry kind of what's the word what's the, what's the kind of taste that i'm i'm trying to not quite you know? sort of aniseedy or in you know it, edging towards that kind of slightly not uh, quite boozy cherry yeah it's 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 kind of more full full than that it's, mm. it's kind of like it's even a smoothie kind of taste to it. It's like someone got a cherry, a few cherries, and like blended it. And it had that kind of like fullness and that kind mm -hmm. of airiness almost. But yeah, it, it like if if you're worried about sour beers, it's like this is this is more sweet than sour, and it's just it, 
it's got that kind of like overwhelmingly fruitiness. It's just, it's just so good. How how do I just say it's so good in like <laughs> two two sentences? Yeah. Well, you, you um, did it in three words, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, let, let let me say this. It's almost as sweet as I guess. Yay! <laughs> Very good. Amazing. <laughs> Um, um, both were good beers both are good beers Um, I think I would if I was out and about I would reach for the good chemistry which I think was called Big Bounce yes Big Bounce Um, more so than the left handed giant Uh, uh, only because the left handed giant uh, which is directional dance a double IPA, which tastes very similar to a lot of other double IPAs that you can buy in the shops mm. right now. Um, it's it, it's not doing anything different. The same as the Quantock double IPA did last week. It's almost not exactly the same, but it's really close. It's really similar. Um, when you're having a few beers, and you know, if you're sat there and you're kind of going, "Oh, let's you know have both of these beers and try and taste the nuance, the difference between these beers," you will pick those out. But when you have one one week and then you have one kind of the next week, they yeah. just merge into each other. And these vegetal earthy double IPAs are all becoming a little bit similar. <laughs> Are you saying other. we drink too much, then? Well, I mean, there might be that as well. Um, <laughs> what did I... I had a, I had a beer from... Um, I think One Mile End? Yes. London Brewery, I think, which I hadn't had for, hmm. like, three or four years. And it was a pale, and it was really easy. Uh, again, it didn't do anything sort of special, but was a very, very easy kind of beer and went down an absolute treat um, for not doing anything differently. Um, Whereas these double IPAs I'm having, which all feel very similar, aren't kind of doing anything enough for me to go back to. Whereas the Big Bounce from uh, Good Chemistry, I think, has a unique flavor that you don't see very much of which i which i like you know it's got that more plummy kind of and it, it had this nice bitterness i love a good bitterness on the end of my ipas so uh, that is the, the the pick for me this week i'd absolutely love to have this beer on tap uh, 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 rather than in can as well and see uh, um, what that's like so uh, i mean normally when i have good chemistry they tend to uh, um, come out on top for me um they just make beers that i really really enjoy so yeah. they are the beers that we have drank this week they are the games that we've been playing and brewmaster coming at some point from uh Auroc digital uh in development still um i i know i'm gonna push you for secrets and dates and all of these sorts of stuff but to come in the future next year okay oh 2022 all right good good did you uh, as as kind of a final point um i was going to ask was this ever a 2021 game but rather than that has the you know from the way that you were working pre-pandemic to the way that you are kind of working now um just very you know briefly how much has that sort of impacted you um yeah uh so in a brilliant way funnily enough okay um obviously you know terrible loss of life and all the other terrible things about it yeah. but um from from a, from a purely working perspective um you know we have managed to bring on some wonderful people mm. um we've uh, managed to bring on people from not just around bristol but from further abroad and further afield um that's been really lovely for us um okay. we've not really slowed down uh, mm-hmm. we've not not delivered anything um and um you know it's meant that some people who uh you know want to kind of work from home and have that kind of flexibility have been able to do that kind of stuff it's been a bit of a you know it's it's kind of sucks that we've not been able to hang out like um you know say like um uh, andres and myself like we've only met like once uh, at right. a, a barbecue mm-hmm. from the the uh, one of the um the people uh, on uh the brewmaster team um but um other than that like you know it's been okay in that way Mm -hmm. um and it's been really nice to be able to kind of uh 
catch up with people and work with people from all around the country from different backgrounds and um, yeah that's been, that's been a really nice thing for us uh, so hopefully when this is all over you know we'll be able to um, get together have a Christmas party oh yeah nice mm. one or two one or two these uh, a few, <laughs> few too many of these actually have the team all together in one space yeah. oh, wouldn't that be nice yeah. then we, they wouldn't just be you know disembodied voices on <laughs> wouldn't that be nice yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah 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 it's, well, it's... well good luck for the rest of the development like, absolutely much yeah we'll keep you uh, I, uh... we'll keep you updated mm. yeah mm. it looks so promising and i'm really looking forward to it and i'm just i'm not just saying that because you like, <laughs> i've had my eyes on this for quite a, quite a long time that's very, very kind of you to say. We really, appreciate, we really appreciate coming on to the show. I've had a great time. Good, good. Yeah, thank you for having us. No, no, no problem at all. Thank no, you very thank much you. for thank you for coming on and, and sharing your time with us. Um, if people I'm want back. to, yeah, absolutely come I'm back. back. Um, if people eyes. want to follow you on the socials uh, and follow the development of the game uh, and hook up with the other games that you guys have uh, put out, how do they do that? Uh, yep, go on, go for it. Uh, go ahead, Peter. I do you, I, I what, do you know? <laughs> just go for it. Yeah, buy for it. Mega Aquarium. It's yeah, just, a very good game. Buy Mega Aquarium, please. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, you can find us at uh, That That takes you to absolutely everywhere. Um, yeah. The best thing that your listeners can do uh, to help us out is uh, give us a wish list on Steam. Yeah. Um, what that means is you'll get notified when the game gets released immediately. Um, and more than that, it shows Valve who uh, own the Steam platform, that this is this is interesting. People like this stuff. Uh, and if we, uh, you know, if uh, if that's the case, then obviously that means that we get it to, it gives us a better opportunity to bring it to a even wider audience. Uh, so hopefully, uh, yeah, so give us a wish list and uh, all that sort of stuff. And um, feel free to tweet at the, uh, tweet at our, um, at Auroch Digital as well. Um, Jem and Ali would love to hear from you. Yeah, I just double checked. We're at Auroch Digital on pretty much everything. I so. think we are, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, nice. So we're, yeah, we're all, we're all we're all good there. Um, yeah, and um, you can tell us about um, I don't know. You can tweet us why you think um, I don't know uh, why you think um, that we're wrong about Newtown Park uh, table beers or um, you know uh, or, or whatever it is. Why you, you should want to be... let me to enjoy sours? Go for it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? That would be good. That would be really good. Please tell us. Why we should drink Just more sours. flooded with beer recommendations uh, from now on. <laughs> Forevermore. Even We've after the game releases, the, just that's uh, it. Yeah, we'd we love that. We just got the Monster Hunter Rise folk now. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, no. Those are my people. Yeah. Uh, amazing. If, if if either of you are happy to uh, to share it, uh, how do people get hold of you? Um, you know, on on Twitter or on um, you know the gaming devices that you, that you play on. Uh, Andres, first, please. Uh, yeah. So on Twitter and on Instagram, I am pretty sure I am the same. Yep, I should be A N Martin thirty six. So A N Martin thirty six. Perfect. Um, and that's me. Amazing. Um, I occasionally do the social media stuff uh, a, a, a little bit here and there. I'm uh, uh, XERO, 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 uh, which is uh, 000, 000 on Twitter and Instagram. But, and my fellow podcast hosts uh, uh, for my own podcast would be furious with me if I didn't do this. Ooh. Because um, uh, if you want to hear me witter on about nonsense, stayinginpodcast.com, you can come and listen to uh, this sort of stuff. Uh, talk about board games and video games and all that sort of thing nice um, uh, if uh, if I've not bored you to tears already so uh, yes there's that as well because uh, my friends Dan, Chris and Sam would be furious if I didn't plug that too <laughs> perfect uh, uh, Bristol based uh, no like all, all, mm -hmm. all, all around the UK actually um, and um, yeah so uh, yeah not not as well put together as this and not as nice people either so um, so you know, can't have everything can you i would stick with this one if i were you uh, i wouldn't listen to that other one but yeah this one's good so. <laughs> amazing already following you both uh, oh, yes oh. perfect <laughs> give give all of those places a visit uh, um chat to to all of us uh, i'm at over and and but uh, but uh, uh, talking about professionalism and well put togetherness i am at nova underscore 47 lucy is uh you can lucy and i don't, don't follow me i don't 
talk about anything <laughs> relevant. Uh, and we are at tanked up under no not tanked up underscore cast anymore tanked up cast it's been that for about three years for fuck's sake um also everybody go to outoflives.net which is where we are hosted and we put up lots of other things lucy i know we've already talked about it previously but you put up a review of axiom verge 2 a little while ago yeah, when that released sure so that's on outoflives.net i put a, rev a review of 12 minutes which is out on outoflives.net so go to all these places and see all of us and you can go to our youtube page see our beautiful faces you can subscribe on Twitch, of course you can, and see our beautiful faces live most Tuesdays and occasionally the other different day, but we'll tell you about that. If you follow us over on the Twitter, uh, that's all of the things, that's all of the places, that's what we do. They're the beers we've drank, they're the games that we play and make. We've mm. been tanked up. Thank you everybody for joining us this evening. We will catch you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. www.outoflives.net <laughs>